Now you're all gonna be in trouble with daddy if you don't, don't be careful. Oh me. shit, we're live! <laughs> I got trot with that one. Daddy. Uh, daddy. Daddy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of High Rollers D and D. It's us. It's the it's the High Rollies gang. I'm your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes. This week, I am joined by. Oh, we've got Ree and Trot, but no Kim, maybe unless. Huh. But hey, Kim's hey, out of the day hey, with hey, Katie. Hey, I'm being Tom. Um, hey. Does. But well, sure. hold on a minute, guys. I just we need to take a minute here okay. because yep. moment of silence. Yep. He has very rarely missed an episode. In fact, I think this may be one of the few episodes he has missed. This is a second. Tom, I will remember <laughs> you. <laughs> will you remember me? He's not dead. He's, he's, oh, not, no. that He's not dead. He's, He's not dead. Family. He's visiting family. Yes. Uh, but we've got no Tommy Wombus this week. It's very yeah. strange. I'm going to fart in his chair. Please do, do it. it. Um, <laughs> so we've got that. We've got a couple of uh, announcements, um, just to reiterate some of the stuff that we've we've been talking about recently. Um, and then we'll jump into our recap and crack on with today's episode. Um, first things first, I want to mention that, don't forget, coming up this week, in fact, on Thursday the 29th, we have... <laughs> um, <laughs> No, coming up on Thursday the 29th at 5 p.m. here on our Twitch channel, we will be streaming our RuneScape Kingdoms one-shot. This is a brand new, just come out, RuneScape tabletop role-playing game. Yeah. That's right, the web-based Java MMORPG game yeah. that you remember from your childhood. We played a tabletop version of it. Um, Ree's very excited. Like, you've got a very excited face on I'm your face. Tom's not here to make the whoops. So, I'm gonna... <laughs> so you've got to bring in the whoops. I've got to bring in the whoops. Oh, oh. Um, but yes, yeah, so that is coming on the 29th, this Thursday, 5 p.m. RuneScape Kingdoms one shot, sponsored by Jagex and Steamforge Games, who uh, created the system as well. Um, and yeah, we're going to be showing that off with, um, some, lovely with some guests. guests. Yeah, we've got some folks coming from Jagex, some J mods. Uh, and I used to be one of those long ago. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. It's a very silly little one shot come and check that out on Thursday I'm um, speaking of other one shots as well coming up on the 8th of March uh, we will also be playing through the Dune TTR yes. Dune. 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 Um, but yeah we're gonna be playing that that's from our good friends at Medif Modifius who have sponsored us to do a playthrough of Dune, Dune. so that is gonna be on the 8th of March um, and we're being constantly told uh, that we don't tell you enough about what we're doing so that's why we're gonna tell you all about it um, <laughs> Speaking of other things to tell you about, the 30th of March, we've mentioned it a few times, but Insomnia 72, we are going to be there on the Saturday. We'll be doing a meet and greet on the show itself, but also in the evening, we have a special live show uh, like we did a long time ago. It's going to be great. It's going to be a cool stage show. Um, the tickets of which are going to be going live on the 28th 20th. for ticket holders. If you are currently a ticket holder, you will get a whole 24 hours early to get tickets to the live show. Otherwise, it will be the 29th at 1 p.m. for everybody else. Um, so if you'd like to come and meet us in person, Insomnia is a great fun show. You can have a blast. There's going to be a ton of other people We've there. Been there the games. We've been there many a time. I used to work there. It's been a jolly good time. Um, so come and check that out on uh, uh, 30th of March and get your tickets. You can get tickets for the show now, but the evening show tickets the 28th and 29th. A um, couple of other quick things. Um, did you guys want to give a shout out to... We got some lovely things from Dispel Dice. So a big oh, thank you yeah. to Dispel Dice. We um, dice. It's not sponsored, they just sent us some lovely they sent dice. Sent us some beautiful dice. Look, these are like perfect for grub. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Why have you done this? <laughs> I was gonna pass these ones over. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Look at that scatter. That's a good scatter. They're beautiful. Switch They're beautiful. the other camera, Sam. Yes. <laughs> Get away from Don't look, look at this, man. Wait, look at this. Yes. There we are. Oh, oh, look at this. It's on the PTZ. There you go. And then these my new gruff dice, look, they're called Frozen they're Heart. Beautiful. They're beautiful. Perfect. These are gelatinous cube dice, and they're yeah. freaking great. They're cool. Uh, and these yeah. are like the Lunar Near Lion, uh, like the Chinese Lions, and these are like red envelope from Chinese New Year. That's from the Chinese Lunar New Year collection. Oh my god. Big, a big thank you to Dispel Dice for sending us Huge thank sets. you. And then lastly, and I didn't mention it last week because it was weirdly in the middle of the week, but happy birthday, Rihanna! Happy birthday, Rihanna! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It is a. I have gone around the sun. No, 
Hello. You've levelled up. I've levelled up. Ding. Yeah. Ding. I've had 30. 30's enough. I've stopped counting. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ree's, Ree's birthday fell in the middle of the week, so I'm saying it today. Thank Happy you. birthday, Ree. Happy birthday. Thank you. And unless there's anything I've forgotten, that is it for my announcements. Mm. No. Yeah. No? Sounds no. You're good. You're free. 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 In that case, Sam, let's run that intro and we'll start today's episode. Hello and welcome back to Erois of Fe not Erois. Oh! <laughs> I actually re it was not Althea that I replaced. It was High Rollers. I just called Erois then. <laughs> welcome back to High Rollers Althea the Dragon Empire. Last time our heroes had taken on a job for the Lamplighters Guild of Ashen Rest to protect Illuminator Teresa Lavendale as she repaired some of the guild's magical Everlights in a rough part of the Riverside District. This brought the attention of other guilds, the Carpenters and Blacksmiths, who seemed to be feuding with the Lamplighters, but showed an unnatural aggression towards them. The party managed to engage in parlay with a member of the Blacksmiths Guild, Grayson Grimhammer, who informed them that recently, people in the district had been acting strangely after the installation of new Everlights. Seeking to protect their turf as well as learn more, they had come to abduct the Illuminator and stop them from working. Having felt a strange presence and influence themselves, the party agreed to stop and investigate, only to realize too late that the terrified Teresa had been exposed to the influence and seemed to suddenly become possessed by some otherworldly influence. Dispatching this strange foe, the party are left with many questions and mysteries and choices to be made on their path forwards. And that is where we come back in today. It is approximately 9 p.m. The night has fallen over Ashen Rest, and much of the town is illuminated by these magical lights. And so even in this plaza, you still have the ambient light coming from the buildings nearby, from other parts of the town, enough to clearly see by, although the shadows are, long, are lengthened and darkened. Um, you can see uh, the stars twinkle above, uh, and you can hear the sounds of the city at night time, at the town at night time. Um, I believe that a few, I believe Gruff and Daisy had been sort of collecting some reports and sort of statements from the witnesses uh, who uh, were here, um, most of which seemed to be focused on uh, this appearance of this fog, this green smoke that came out of Teresa's mouth and eyes and attacked um, and caused damage, like created this acidic kind of like spray and cloud and vomit um, that has damaged the plaza. Very little of these witnesses can report too much on what happened previously or what had happened, um, you know, the conversations and things that you had. They were literally just watching, um, and so they've only got partial uh, experience. Necessarily demonic, right? They they just saw some sort of weird fog and magic and a fight. They don't really know anything about it. The other thing that was discovered is uh, you the broken Everlight um, that that Teresa had repaired. You had taken apart and found a strange metal disc in. And thanks to a very high roll, I believe from Xanthius, you determined that it could actually be split open to reveal some sort of powerful enchantment inscribed within, with a strange symbol uh, in the center of it. Um, unable to determine what this is itself, uh, you are left with this kind of um, uh, lead to potentially follow. Um, and that is pretty much where we stand now. 
Ashen Rest bustling still a little bit, but quieting down as night falls. Um, Xanthius is going to basically tell you that he is going to investigate this, that he needs to, you know, he's going to go and um, rest, uh, mainly because, Thomas, I don't want to give away anything, especially with Xanthius, who I know, I think we all know at this point, has got some secrets to hide. Just tell us what it is. That is we'll what pretend. I want. This we'll is pretend. what I want to avoid. When he comes back next week, we'll just pretend. We'll be like, oh, man, like, no. what's going on, bro? So to avoid me accidentally giving anything away, yeah, yeah. Xanthius is going to maybe... He slips away a little bit unseen, but does kind of, or at least lets you know that he has some things he is going to look into and that he will find you all in the morning ready to meet with the Duke. Does he let us know about the disc that he found? In yes, the he will pass. I believe, in fact, I believe he intentionally gave the Everlight and the disc to somebody. I believe, Rowan, you actually have Teresa, kind of like an unconscious Teresa with you that you're carrying currently, this little halfling woman, um, sort of like pale, purple, pinkish hair, um, big spectacles and like these kind of overalls and things like that. Um, so I mean, it sounds like if, if, if Gruff and, and Daisy were going around collecting these statements, Ophelia, Xanthius probably gives you this broken lantern and the disc. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's like, look, just, he'll say, look, just, um, Go and speak to... The others know where this elf, this Blackwing, is. I rec Go and speak to them. They seem to know a lot about magic. There are just some things I need to I need to check in on. And I'll go back... I want to go back to the to the, the Clever Toad and just make sure everything's all right. I will meet you in the morning before you go and speak with the Duke, but there's just some things I want to, I want to check out. Um, and I need to do that on my own. Okay. All right. And he'll pass you the, the broken broken information, like, and then set out. Um, yeah. I'll let you guys think about it. I forgot I haven't got the town map. I'm just going to grab that. You guys can have a think about what you would like to do. Yeah, so I think at the end of it, it was pretty much Gruff trying to orchestrate, like, Rowan looks after Teresa, um, and Ophelia and Xanthius originally go to Blackwing yep. um, to talk about, maybe take the broken lamp, Everlight, and invest, and also Blackwing wanted to meet Ophelia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we were going to take witness statements for everyone, so depending on how that's kind of worked out, I feel like... Because I, I don't know if like we can go with you to Blackwing. I think we probably like, should. Yeah, because it feels weird to send Zanthius, you on your own. Yeah. 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 Feel yeah. tensions are like up here at the minute. Yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. Freaking out about what's going on. Yeah. Um, also, did we send Percy out to queue? Percy's queuing. Yeah, Percy's queuing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's just. He was on a timer yeah. and he just. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Time to go. <laughs> 9 p.m. Yeah. He was doing yeah. other tasks and then just yeah. something clicked and he went. <laughs> Dropped it, <laughs> dropped it and just walked to the queue. That's yeah, like cleaning his room, his room, probably just. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh well, and also yeah. like he he would have like it, any tasks would have been done well before the appointed oh, yeah. time. Like he's very efficient. He's very efficient because he is programmed to just do these things. He doesn't get distracted. He doesn't get hungry. He just does it until it's done and then he moves on. Um, but Percival is basically queuing for your audience with the Duke um, at ten o'clock at night and is going to wait there all night. Is that the understanding? I believe so. All right, okay. Uh, you might check night. in on the way. Sure. Yeah, yeah. you can check yeah. in. Like, Make sure no one's, like, graffitied him or something. <laughs> Do you have any gloves? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case somebody oh, eats a Did you give him any? No, I was like, yeah. Um... Uh, if you do not have gloves, then you can go. Uh, you tomorrow you could try and purchase some gloves. But if you don't have any Sweet to spare, yeah. uh, Xanthius has gloves, mittens. but he ain't given those up. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. So, little uh, mittens, Percy. You don't have any mittens, but you could certainly get some made. We've got some in real life, um, though. But I think One. that I think that <laughs> Percival would probably have a kind of um, not programming, but has like a kind of ongoing order of like. Don't let people like touch you or, or like look under your robes and things like that. Has like a kind of default like we'll back away if somebody goes to try and like disrobe him, he like backs away and we'll we'll run away if he has to. Like nice. there is like some semblance of self preservation. Like he has like default commands probably long before you acquired Percival. His previous the person who animated him probably gave him set commands that would be very common in cool. Osseus to give uh, cool. a skeletal servant. Um, nice. Which is also what enables him to like do certain jobs without you even having to ask him. Like He looks after what things that you need. Um, awesome. They're very particular about their, their uh, undead in Osseus. Yes. So. Um, but yeah, um, so... Uh, and we can say that the statements have been gathered. Like, you guys can, like, you know, you you are all together and like you don't need to worry about splitting up if you don't want to, but if you do, uh, mm -hmm. what's the plan? I think Rowan would be asking the locals... Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, where's a good place to take someone that needs medical attention? Uh, I mean, normally, like, there are healers. I mean, if somebody's really sick, we take them to the, the cathedral. Um, if, they're, oh. if, they've, if they're unwell, I mean, if somebody gets into a fight, I mean, normally people just take care of it themselves. They bandage their wounds and things like that. You know, generally people just get into fist fights, so it's very rare that anybody needs help of that level unless it's a disease or an illness or something like that then they go up to the cathedral or they go to um uh, blah, 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 blah. uh they go to That's an interesting the house term. of the heron uh, by the the river the house of the heron um it's a temple de uh, devoted to uh talan um thank you saint talan i think we should go to the cathedral they did say that we should tell the people at the cathedral what we saw yes so we should maybe just go there anyway <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. I'm you were trying. about to say something, Gruff. Hello, my name is Gruff. Where are you from? <laughs> from a village called Tremoro. Uh, aye, I think that's a good idea. It'd be also good to ask the the uh, the saint, uh, not the saints, the priests, if they know about this demon. Hmm. I mean, how, should we warn the town? There, are, there are lights everywhere. Who knows how many of these demons are in these lights? Hmm. How do we warn people? I think there's something of a bigger plot going on here. Hmm. Maybe we need to gather more evidence. Clearly, from what the carpenters and the blacksmiths were saying, the lamplighters were silencing them to the Duke. So if we go around causing alarm, it might invite more trouble to us at the moment. Okay. So stay calm. I will stay calm. Yes, nice and calm. I agree. The people of this this city need need telling. They need protecting. This is we can't have demons running around willy nilly. Oh no, no. Um, but right now we need to get more evidence to present directly to the duke. Okay. One thing we need to do before we continue: crucible, crucible of fate. Uh, can I have you all roll a d six, please? She's done it. The curse has been lifted. Yay! It took me sitting on your side of the table. Lucky number thirteen. Uh, <laughs> A four, that is a dice for you. How's Kim? it? Kim? One. A dice for me. Not so four. Dice. A dice for you. <gasps> Two. A dice for me. Do you get a roll for myself? Uh, no, he's not here. He's it's not only here. who are present. Uh, a four, so one dice for you. So we are four and uh, three and two today. Sweet. Okay, all right. Um, and I have, okay. I have a lovely little thing coming soon, so the dice will be oh. visible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's 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 soon, um, yeah. I'm also well, going to uh, use, I'm going to use this D4 uh, just to represent where you guys currently are. You guys are basically down here, uh, probably here actually. Um, in Riverside. I'd like to lift it a little. Um, I don't want to lift it because then the dice will slide off, but I can... I, can... I got a lump of blue tack. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, this is more for your benefit because the you know, audience aren't going to be able to see too clearly anyway and podcast listeners anyway, so... Um, but yeah, you guys are currently down in the Riverside District. Um, so, yeah, where if you wanted to head up to Bright Shadow Cathedral, you absolutely could do. Um, it's probably long past. The cathedral is probably uh, closing as it's... They've probably had their nighttime service now. Um, so it will be, you know, kind of waking the priests up or, like, getting them to come and open the doors to you. Uh, there's also um, Black Wings Tower, Raven Star Spire, is on the way. Um, or you could go about any other business you see fit. I reckon if Black Wings Wing, yeah. on the way, we'll pop in because maybe he can, they can, um, you know, discern some magic on Teresa or something like that. Mm -hmm. They are old. Residual magic. Sure. Yeah. Demonic. Demonic. So that's the plan on the way. Just kind of see what the, what's going on in the town. Sure. Yeah, boy. Uh, you guys make your way. Um, there is some. You probably would notice that you know you guys have been here after the fight for a fair while now. None of the like town guard have come here. Like no, nobody's gone. No, the town guard haven't come running. Anything like that. Um, it seems that whatever happened here, either they have purposely avoided it, or nobody has gone to fetch them. Um, certainly, the fight didn't make enough noise to really attract attention from too far away. Um, but there definitely wasn't. Uh, there's you don't see any sign that the town guard are coming. The the, the duke's guard. I mean, if um, they've already had fights with these people in this area trying to fix these lights, they probably yeah. are still just ignoring it, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, you make your way through the streets of Ashen Rest, and being about sort of like 9 p.m., you know, 
closing in on 10 p.m. Most of the streets are empty, but you immediately start passing by other Everlights that are lit and glowing. I mean, what do you guys do? Do you Daisy's avoid gonna them or? walk in, basically try and avoid all of the light, you and can, she's gonna have, to. she's gonna have light on her dagger as well. Sure. You so to do that will probably slow you down because you'll have to like pick routes where these lights aren't present if you want to try and avoid them, um, or if we have to go through them. She's gonna do that. She's gonna wait and just like run through it really, really quickly, and then walk normally, and then run through the light really, really quickly. Like, yeah, they 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 are frequent <laughs> enough that there are gaps without them, but they are pretty common. Like they illuminate most of the town. One thing you would all notice, especially those of you who did get kind of touched by the influence in that fight, you don't feel anything like that moving through these other other lights. I don't know if it was these are different or if it's you know maybe you're aware of it you don't know but you don't feel the same you don't feel those negative emotions kind of like welling up in you when you kind of move through um you make your way through you pass by you know some stragglers people going to or coming from taverns uh people heading home after a long day maybe working in a in a artisan's workshop or in a shop um you see the occasional duke's guard but they're in small patrols like normally teams of two or three just kind of doing the rounds um because most of the streets here are very quiet and you know they this is a, a town where people live right um you make your way to the tall, imposing structure of Ravenstar Spire. You see that strange um, material, the stone that it's constructed from, and at night, the tower looks, it's almost invisible against the night sky. It's so dark in the stone, it is only through <clears throat> the occasional bit of kind of silver texture in the, in the material itself or the glint of the pale blue tiles of the roof um, that you can really make it out. Um, and as you approach, for you, Ophelia, initially you see no sort of entrance to this tower. It just looks like perfectly smooth stone. You can see windows very high up, sort of, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet up, but you don't see any sort of doorway. As you draw closer and the other three seem to be moving towards a part of the tower, you begin to see a silver outline of a door, kind of like the Mines of Moria, mm. the kind of moon door, right? Um, it begins to take the shape and come into view. This doorway appears before your eyes. Um, and the rest of you can clearly see that, yeah, the door that you remember that there being there is still there. Um, I shot put Teresa through that door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, you would probably notice um, that there is, Gruff would notice this with your passive perception, there is a raven uh, that is just perched on the building opposite the tower and it's watching you the whole time that you kind of come near the tower, it starts watching you. I give it a and nod. Then it, you nod and then it flies into one of those upper windows. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm assuming you go up and open the door, step mm -hmm. inside. The interior is the same as the three of you once saw it, but for Ophelia's benefit, you feel a sensation of you... They open the door and you step in. Um, but it is almost like crossing a threshold. Like, you st you step into a shadowed room and then suddenly it's like your air is kind of pulled from you, you almost feel yourself pulled forward. And then there is no more door. The door is already shut behind you, but you don't remember it being shut. Uh, and you stand in a room that is in this kind of soft, gentle moonlight. Um, this kind of white pearlescent glow falls upon a rather comfortable looking lounge setup. You can see a kind of couch, small table laden with fruit and some, you know, uh, a decanter, a glass decanter of what looks maybe to be wine. You can see that there is this table covered with unusual plants that you've never seen before, um, either here in, whether back in Osseus or here in, in uh, Ilmera. You also notice that there is a large brass stand upon which three um, corvids, three crows, sit watching the whole group with these beady eyes, their little beaks just watching every movement, completely silent. And a spiral staircase leads to rooms above. A voice sort of echoes out through the chamber. Please be seated. I will join you presently. I am finishing some work. Help yourself 
partake in drink and food. I ask for nothing in return. This kind of very delicate voice just drifts through the chamber. Is it somewhere comfortable to put Teresa down? Yeah, one of these sofas, they look pretty, kind of almost like chaise long, almost, mm -hmm. um, with rich, dark black velvet um, cushions, uh, the heavy floral scent as you place her down. And she's just uh, dreamily kind of passed out from the events that have taken place. Yeah, I'm taking a breath. Yeah, and, she's uh, hold something. She is sleeping. She's unconscious um, and has drifted sort of into a sort of it's now exhausted. Uh, yeah, an exhausted type of sleep. Okay. No traces of the green smoke or anything like that that you can see. Um, Phoebe will go to sit down. Then it's very comfortable. You sit down. Very soft, plush cushions. Um, the smell of the wine is quite strong and, and potent. Um, you can see that there are other sort of like little pastries, kind of on a small plate next to the fruits and things like that. It's very, uh, it's very welcoming kind mm. of atmosphere. It reminds you of some of the sort of um, parlors that the other members, the, the more senior members mm. of the House of Blood, would often you know, have guests wait in. It was that kind of waiting area. Yeah, um, I think that's why she'd go to sit down. It just feels familiar in a really, mm, like, odd sense. Yeah, yeah. One of the crows from the brass stand flies over and lands on the sofa behind you, and just you hear this very soft, sweet music as the bird is almost singing, but it's like music. It's it's like a bird song, um, and it's very gentle and very soothing, um, as they do. Anybody else? Anything else anybody else is doing? Uh, I think Gruff would very tentatively sit next to, if, if there's a safe space on the sofa, like next yeah. to Ophelia, just kind of that kind of... Imagine like a table in the centre yeah. of these two chaise longs. Like, you know, I imagine Teresa's been laid down on one and then Ophelia's sat on the other one. And they're long enough for about three people to sit down to. Mm. Maybe Rowan would take up the space yeah. of two people because of his Daisy's his gonna sit on the floor cross-legged. Sure, yeah. In the middle, Yeah. by the table. Just Gruff tucks himself in, like, trying not to touch anything. Because it's very fine. Yeah. He's not just very fine. No. It's actually, Daisy, you'd probably know, because you obviously pay more attention to the floor. Um, you realise that it's not... The floor isn't wood or stone. It's like a blue grass material. Mm. It's almost like a carpet, but you realise it's natural. Um, it's kind of got this blue grass uh, for a floor um, when you sit down. It's comfortable. It's very squishy and, you know, kind of feels very soft. Um, but it is definitely sort of natural. Um Within a few moments, though, a figure descends down from the stairs, and the rest of you recognise this as Blackwing, this elf, but for Ophelia, a figure... Initially, you only see them sort of like they're dressed, but it is like this long, flowing black robe made of these gossamer-like uh, black fabrics. Um, as they begin to descend further, there is a cloak made of black feathers, and you see these long, slender hands draped with, like, silver jewellery. But as more of their features come into place, what would Ophelia expect an elf to look like? Oh, interesting. Yeah, and this is Ophelia's, like, you know, yeah. based on what she's heard or legends or things like that, um, mm. or just what she might expect an elf to appear as. Very sort of regal and ethereal, almost, like, otherworldly. Mm -hmm. Like they're of another... Yeah, just of another plane entirely. Like. Mm. Well, like, do you imagine, like, like completely alien, like, features, like, physical, like, facial features and things as well, or, like... Because I can give you some ideas of like what that might look like. Obviously, yeah. I, I imagine like maybe something like rather than like normal eyes, they almost just have these giant black opals, mm. right? And they have soft tendrils like of translucent skin, sort of like hanging down yeah. their face. Their their skin is pale but almost see through. Like you can see mm. their veins and things like that. Yeah. Very alien. Long ears. Kind of yeah. probably got to keep the long ears, but very alien. Very different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Trot's face. Trot's face that without that thing. thing. That like back in the zone. is exactly what Ophelia sees this person Ooh. to be, right? They fit this, almost this idealistic expectation of what an elf called Blackwing you expect them to look like. They just look like that. Yeah. Um, and they drift their way downstairs. And obviously for the rest of you, it is exactly as you remember what your characters would perceive an elf to be like. Um, but Blackwing kind of descends and looks at you all... I did not expect to see you all again so soon. Please, 
um, and looking around. Who hasn't taken a seat? I think Rowan hasn't taken a seat yet, have you? Uh, they will gesture, and a chair sort of materializes out of nothing and slides next to the table. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Of course, you are guests within my home. I wish you to be comfortable. What ails you? Well, um... You have brought this one. Yes. Sorry, they weren't invited, but it's a little gnome, and they've been through a lot recently, and we think it's something strange and demonic is uh, infesting the town. How curious. Looks over, Teresa. Yes. There is a trace of something here. And you have sought me out, why? Oh, <laughs> well, to meet Ophelia, of course. Um, Another one of your companions? Yes. Uh, forgive me, sorry, I am Ophelia Delarosa of the House of Blood. I believe you requested my presence? Your companions and the Dragonborn told me of you all. I am curious. I enjoy meeting others and your traveling friends are unusual. I am Blackwing. My elven name is perhaps troublesome, but many have come to call me Blackwing here. I am a weaver, master of magic. I can create enchantments, and from time to time I have been known to help those who have needed my aid. Of Sister Ophelia Della Rosa. Yes. Of the House of Blood. Yes. How strange and curious. I must admit, I know very little of the material world beyond ash and rest. I know a little of the dragon's empire. I've heard of the land of ice from which Gruffith comes from. But I have seen others similar to Rowan, giant's blood. Remembers my name. <laughs> but the house of blood, this is not something I know. Would you tell me of it? Yes, I am from Osseus. It is across the ocean. Ah. The Great Sea. And this house of blood, mm -hmm. is it... Is that a, a king, a queen, a noble home? It is our noble house from ah. which I have been raised in. I see you are royalty of your land. Well, <laughs> I wish to be. Well, I'll rise to that status at least, but no, for the moment I am among, I am a lower rank, I must admit. Um, but you are capable of achieving greatness. Oh, yes, I'd like to think so. Mm, how curious. It reminds me of the elven courts of my home. Such was very similar. Even an elf who was not born of noble lineage could rise to great heights within our culture. How strange. I would like to learn more. I find, after many thousands of years, it is nice to be surprised by things. Th thousands of years? How You've been here for thousands of years? I have been within the material realm for, I believe, something close to 300 years. <sighs> That's but inspirational. beyond that, where I am originally from, the Feywild, we do not measure time in years. I could not tell you how old or how long I was there, but I have existed. I am of the third generation of my kind. The ravages of time are cruel. I would love to be somewhere where time is endless and unknowing. It is, and there's almost like this 
mournful look on Blackwing's face. Yes. I have never contemplated what an end would be. But now I must, for mortal I have become. It's oh, almost this whimsical look. My dearest condolences. Thank you. None have expressed such a concern to me before. Many do not understand what it is like to lose out on immortality. Well, immortality is something great to aim for. I too long for an endless march to a great realm beyond this one. Interesting. And what realm do you seek to enter? The Grey One. The Grey Land. There's almost this excited tone. Keep in mind, I doubt any of the three of you have ever heard the term the Grey Lands before, because none of you are, well, except you hear a voice in your head, Daisy. There is this almost like moment of shock. You can feel Nim's shock when Ophelia says, well, when Blackwing says Grey Lands and Ophelia is like, yes, that one. Nim will say, the lands of the dead, oh. home of the Grave Emperor. How curious. Blackwing stares intently at you, and now you watch the shadows in the room seem to pull into Blackwing's cloak, leaving this whole room without shadow. It's just light, and all the shadow just vanishes, pulled into Blackwing and their face becomes that of a skull. And they look at you. What do you know of the Grey Lands? Do you serve the Grave Emperor? Yes, I do. The shadows fill back into the room and Blackwing returns to the form that you saw. Um. <laughs> Rare yeah. is one of this realm who knows of this. Sorry, you are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> that was incredible. Uh, a small glamour, I find my magic has a mind of its own from time to time. Mm. Mm. There will be time for us to discuss this more, for it is rare that I find one who is interested in the realms beyond. I'd love to know more about your realm, the Fae, Fae Wield. There is a very ironic smile. Give me insight checks. Actually, all of you can make an insight check, because there's a pause here. And I want to see if you can read into this pause. Okay, good to know. Finally, the dice come it's up ready. It took three sets. <laughs> Thank you, Dispel Dice. <laughs> Thank you, Dispel. These are the ones. We are blessed. <laughs> the gold so, We know we got a nat 20 over on Ree. Uh, what about uh, six? Six. 16. 16. Nine. Nine. What's the total with your inside bonus? 23. You 23. Okay, good to know. Um, Gruff, you pick up a little bit on this, and I'm give. i going to give uh, Ophelia a bit more information. There is not a discomfort, but there is something about Blackwing's expression where... You sense the Feywield and the Greylands have history. Mm. Ophelia, you have spent enough time around courtiers and you've been amongst people who've been having these kind of diplomatic conversations that you've learned to pick up on a few things here and there. You can immediately tell Blackwing has... Uh, a sort of innate distaste for the Greylands. Like, you can immediately go, ah, I don't think this person is actually a big fan of this. But there is also this kind of disconnect. Mm. Um, and you get the sense that there's almost a slight smile of irony or perhaps bemusement at this conversation. You do not know of the Feywild. And yet you serve the Grave Emperor. How curious. I suppose uh, the Feywild is no longer my home, and its fate is no longer my concern. For a long time, the warriors of the Feywild, 
and the Grave Emperor's endless hordes, we waged war for eternity. We are opposite ends of the realms. Life within the Feywild, death within the Greylands. What do you think the Greylands are? How would you describe them? Endless glory. Just the most beautiful thing I will ever witness. I hope that it lives up to your expectations. Still, we did not come here to reminisce of my realm or others. You spoke of something with this one. What has come to pass? Rowan is unnerved by this whole encounter and it's probably like tugging on Gruff when it does the whole skull thing. It's like, where should we go? Gruff, <laughs> Gruff puts a reassuring paw on, on your hand. Nim is very much in your head, by the way, Daisy, saying, I do not trust this elf. I do not trust Ophelia. Daisy is just going to head desk on the coffee table. And in her head, say to Nim, just when I think everything's going fine and we're making friends, then the skull thing happens and they're on the dead lands and I just don't know what to think anymore. She's just having a little existential crisis with her head on the coffee table. Yep. Uh, so, Gruff, <laughs> say anything more? Right. <laughs> um, I guess Gruff would uh, give a kind of brief appraisal of everything that happened that evening, mm. of the lights, um, the a kind of a rough thing of like the things with the Carpenter's Guild, the Black um, Smith's Guild, the Lamplighter's Guild, the lights leading to this effect mm. um, and then summoning this demon that possessed Teresa. Mm. Um, and then I'd encourage Ophelia to show the kind of broken shards of the Everlight and the disc that Xanthius found inside. Sure. I'll keep your previous insights, by the way, for Gruff and Ophelia. You can immediately tell Black Queen does not care about the politics of the guilds. Mm. Like literally could not be less interested yeah. in it. But he's very interested in the, when you get to the point of like this smoke and Teresa seemingly becoming possessed and the the magical enchantment, all of this, much more interested. And it's like, oh yes, of course. And begins to examine the disc. Curious. Takes them a while. I'm gonna actually, they are gonna ritual cast some spells. Um, Detect magic being one of them, but also some other spells, some divination spells. Um, takes about half an hour, and you guys are just sat there. Um, at one point, um, uh, Blackwing will basically suspend the broken light and the disc in the air um, and call one of the crows to its hand, to their hand. The crow then basically becomes an almost like a, an orrery, like a series of like bands made of this silvery wood. The crow just morphs into it <laughs> and it kind of surrounds the light with it and begins examining it and, you know, casting strange spells to examine it and eventually whoop, the orrery becomes a crow again and then they pass the lantern back to you, Ophelia. This is the work of mages here within your realm, so some of the details are unfamiliar to me, but the magic I know. First, this symbol, they gesture to this symbol in the middle of the disc, which shows like a dot with a rune and then series of like interlinked, like an orrery itself with runes kind of dotted around it. This symbol represents the planar realms beyond your world of Althea. Each of these runes belongs to a different realm. This one is of my realm, or my former realm, Feywield. <laughs> this, and on the opposite end of that same centric ring, this rune is the Greyland. These two points to another ring with two symbols on it. The Lucent Peaks. When Blackwing says this, you feel Nim tense up having not heard that term for a long time. The Lucent Peaks are the realms of celestials, angelic beings. It's a place of law, order, duty, and justice. Oh, yeah. Opposing it 
the twin pits. The pit, Abaddon, the pit of chains, and Diablos, the pit of suffering. And above them both, the Black Palace and the Helian Throne, realm of fiends, devils, and demons. This, she points to a, uh, they point to a ring which encircles all of them with four rings on it. These four are the primal isles, home of the jinn, the elemental creatures. And then finally, kind of threaded through them all is a kind of long, thin line. The precept coil, strange city of metal twisted into a spire. Home of the axim, constructs of law, probability, precision, logic. And although there is no room for it, surrounding all of it is the howling sea, the sea of chaos, pandemonium, a realm of energy pure and simple. As I have come to understand it, this is a representation that was taught to your earliest ancestors by the sovereign. A representation of the planar realms beyond your world. The enchantment. Now this is interesting. It functions in two ways, hence the two discs split in half. In one way, the enchantment feeds on negative emotions, such as fear, anger, jealousy, paranoia, and it converts them to magical energy that is sent back through a, a current of power. The opposite end, or the other part of the enchantment, is it feeds energy back into the people that it has drawn those emotions from. That power, to my understanding, comes from a planar realm. And if what you described, Gruffith of Tremoro, I believe it to be a fiend, a creature of the Twin Pits. So this light is linked to a specific creature? The realm itself, the I realm. believe. Mm -hmm. Specifically, if I... My knowledge of fiends is limited, but... I do not believe that this enchantment would feed both Abaddon and Diablos. Diablo, Diablos. It would be one of the two pits. They are opposed to one another, as likely to fight amongst themselves as they are the other realms. Ah. When the smoky demon boyo came out, he said... Now, before you ask, you say demon. Are you sure? Because there is a distinction. Fiends come as demon and devil. Demons come from Diablos, a bit of suffering. They are creatures of violence and anguish, pain. Well, what I'm about to say next might answer your question, because they said, the barrier weakens, the Hellion throne will never see this coming. Mm, unfortunately, it does not answer the question as I hoped. The Helian throne Blackwing brings their hand and conjures an illusory image. And you see almost like a 3D render, like a kind of old school Star Wars hologram of a flat plane with two enormous cylinder-like pits next to one another. But in the middle, suspended above them both, bound to the, the perfectly flat wasteland above the pits that the pits are dug into, but suspended via chains above both pits is a single massive building. The Helian throne. <laughs> it is the ruler of both the pits. They rule over both demon and devil. The creature that sits within it is whatever demon or devil can ascend to the top of its own pit and claim the throne within the Black Palace. When they do so, they become a creature of both demon and devil, a fiend pure as it can be, and a ruler of both. 
There is a great competition amongst the demons and devils. All of them wish to sit within the Helian throne and rule over all the others, for this is their nature, power, greed, ambition. So it is curious that the creature you spoke of said this. Likely they perhaps have a destiny to claim the throne for themselves. But unfortunately, I do not believe it will tell us whether they are demon or devil. Unless there is something you can think of. Can I ask Nim in what my head? What would you like to ask Nim? If they got a sense of it being a devil or a demon. Nim, it's been very quiet. I just worry that that, I worry that this elf can hear me. Well, you can tell me later then. We don't have to talk about it right now. The truth is, I don't know. I, my senses are so limited within you, little one. I could sense that it was a fiend. I know it was from the Twin Pits. My company, my legion, we, we fought them countless times. I fought them for millennia, centuries. I, I don't know how long, but I fought their kind and their foul machinery and their weapons. I know it was from the Twin Pits, but I could not tell you which kind it was. I will say this, demons, when I have fought them, they are creatures of cruelty and aggression, uh, hunger, desperation. The devils of Abaddon are different. They are clever, cunning, they manipulate, they can appear as an emissary of peace and then stab you in the back, or make a deal that favors them. It's called the Pit of Chains for a reason, as Diablos is called the Pit of Suffering for another. Which one's the, which one's the chains? Uh, 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 Abaddon. Abaddon. Which is the... Uh, devils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Devils come from Abaddon, the Pit of Chains. Demons come from Diablos, the Pit of Suffering. Sound like lovely places. <laughs> I bet they're quite competitive with their tourist rates. Mm. <laughs> Funny how that, um, that creature looked at Xanthius, though, and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, Blackwing will kind of consult the disc. I can also tell you that magic has been used to disguise this aura, this enchantment. A detection spell will not reveal it to be enchanted in this way. It has been carefully hidden. But this particular light, the one you have brought me, must have been perhaps damaged or perhaps incorrectly used. I do not believe, I believe it is not finished or, or some something is different about this, this one. I do not believe the enchantment is correct. We shot it. More than just that, more than just the physical damage. This this was damaged before it was activated. It was broken. Or perhaps broken, broken or, or correctly installed. Well, Teresa was trying to repair it. It was broken. When the little one wakes up, perhaps that is a question to ask them. If you don't mind, I... This is all very... This is a lot. But yeah. my... I am worried about this... Poor little halfling. I am no healer. Maybe I should go look for a healer. If you wish. We were going to go to the cathedral afterwards. Maybe the priests will be able to help, especially if there's something demonic or devilish still left in her. So we'll see to her, don't worry. Those who have not encountered the planar powers before are... I can imagine it would be quite a stress upon the body. It is best to keep an eye on them. I will say one more thing. I could create something that would be able to detect this enchantment. But it would require a rather unusual object. If you were able to acquire a piece of a metal called felite, a type of metal mined within the Twin Pits by the fiends, 
It is used in their weapons and machinery. It would need to be from the correct pit, whichever one this power is drawn from. I would be able to create a, a, an object that would allow you to find or identify this enchantment, or perhaps give you more information. But uh, you would need to acquire this felite for me to do so. There was one other thing. Uh, someone mentioned something about ley lines and these lights being on the ley lines. I believe that these Everlights, I have seen the lamplighters, they, they have asked me to pay for their services, which I find quite amusing to think that one would pay for light. What a curious idea. Their Everlights are drawn from a current of power that flows through the city. Um, I'm aware of it, of course flows all throughout the city, from the large beacons upon the wall. So we believe the lights aren't necessarily connected to this disc, and that the disc could be some sort of sabotage or some other party involving themselves with these lights to cause these things to come out and do bad stuff to people. Is there a question? I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> Am I on the right lines? Well, that from, is not for me to decide. Uh, from okay. what Teresa said, the lamplighters were the ones who make these, and from what the blacksmith said, because the blacksmith could invo be involved in making the the casing and all of that, I don't know. Uh, but they make it in their own workshops, right? So it, that says to me that someone in the Lamplighters Guild is complicit. Mm. But the this disc itself, yeah. is this, was this created with Althean materials? Is this an Althean creation, this disc? I believe or, so. So it is okay. Mm. So this wasn't crafted in the pit and no. taken, okay. But it, it, it would be very difficult for one of your kind to create this sort of enchantment, one that feeds power back mm. to a planar realm, and indeed creates a, a two-way connection. For remember, part of this enchantment, it, it draws the negative emotions of those within the light and sends it to the Twin Pit, but in return, something else is sent back along the path. It would be almost impossible for an Althean to do this without assistance on the other side. Yes, Rowan. So, with the light, yeah. do they need the bad energy to make light, or is it separate from These the light? lights have been here for decades, and I have never heard of this effect taking place before. I do not believe the lights themselves, or even the the power that it draws from was intended for this, but it is possible that it has been transformed or changed recently. But I, I have been here for at least a century or more, and I have never heard of this situation occurring before. And in fact, I believe that were this I believe that because this particular disc was wrong or um, broken before it was installed, that is what caused your friend to become possessed. This was too powerful. It was drawing too much and giving too much in return. It could be that the other lights are far more subtle in their mm -hmm. use of this power fortune upon you that you have encountered one broken enough to draw your attention to it. Oh, this is all too much. We're just trying to do a nice job and oh. now there's demons and devils. Well, you could simply forget about it all and continue oh, your business. I can't. I'm going to have nightmares now. Would you like something to help you sleep? Um, what, what, what would it be? 
You see Blackwing goes over to the plants, pulls a few leaves, scrapes some some seeds from like uh, one's stem, takes it over to a little alchemy of mortal and pestle and starts grinding and making some sort of poultice. And Rowan does not wake up for the audience with the Duke. <laughs> Sleeping beauty. Takes them maybe about 10 minutes and they come back with a cool. little sort of... Night quill. <laughs> <laughs> this will provide you with sleep. Oh, it's so very kind of you, thank you. You are welcome. It's just, he's shaking, his hands shaking. It's just, a, and any, none of you have been involved in things like this before, right? Would it make you feel better if if we went and visited the clever toad on the way back? <laughs> he did warn us of the shadows. I should have listened. The Church of the Scions could also provide you with a blessing. Hmm. That's true, yes. See, Blackwing is kind of smirking <laughs> when when Crop says that, like, yes, yes, go to your little priests. <laughs> like, like mm, I'm talking about great planar powers, but sure, go to go to Father What's his name. <laughs> no, I know. I know. It. I, and, and exactly, and Gruff's totally valid to believe in it. Yeah. Blackwing is just like, lol, mortal shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm mortal now, Sag. Yeah, um, this is what you have to believe in. Do you want to you come as well, Blackwing? Get a little blessing. Right. <laughs> Confess the, the, the elves actually have their own gods. But, yeah, yeah. Um, we won't take up too much more of your time. <laughs> My time, I have plenty to give. Have you met the Duke before? Yes. Duke Ignorius. I have provided counsel to the Duke Ignorius. We, we want to present this case to him tomorrow, but we've heard he can be a bit dismissive. Uh, have you got any advice on how to, pres how to catch his attention on this? Because innocent people are going to be hurt by this. I will tell you this. I will speak of what I know of Duke Ignorius. For his manner is not for me to assume or infer. I believe him to care deeply about the people of his lands. He is regarded as a great hero who suffered great personal cost to defend these lands from the arch gold dragon Galdvasar. I believe him to be honorable, but proud. And like all dragons, his trust often falls to that which he knows. If I were you, Gruffith of Tremoro, I would not question this guild without substantial proof of their foul doing. For you are but a stranger in these lands, and the Duke has known their grandfathers and their grandfathers before them. Dragons, their trust is often placed greatly upon those who live a long time. Those who do not becomes generational trust. An elf such as myself, I have well, I have known Duke Ignarius for nearly 300 years. I believe that I have his trust as he has mine. Uh, a dwarf of this Lamplighter's Guild who has lived 200 years would have likely known the Duke for much of their adult life. Great trust would be born between them. But say a human who lives perhaps only 50, 60 years, his name will be forgotten by the Duke but his family name will be remembered. And so great trust may be put upon their son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter. Keep this in mind. Would you vouch for us if we mentioned we had you investigate, look at this disc? I will tell the Duke the exact nature of what this enchantment does, but I could not speak to, for all I know, and please understand that I say this not in any distrust of any of you, but as a matter of truth. For all I know, and he gestures at Teresa, this halfling here is the one responsible. She was the one who repaired the lantern, did she not? I agree. If, if she is responsible, she must be brought, brought to justice. But just in trying to present this to the Duke, in trying to ensure the safety of the innocent people of this, this town. 
You say he wouldn't trust us because we're strangers, I agree. But saying that you have investigated the you have examined the disc could at least be enough to start something, plant a seed. I think that you must understand this. I will tell the Duke what this disc does and that it has some connection to the planar realm of the Twin Pits. I will tell him exactly the nature of this enchantment. But that is all. I will not lay an accusation, nor will I make an assumption. And I believe the Duke himself. I do not believe that my examination of this disc would be enough. I suspect that he would be concerned, but it would be very easy for one to suggest that it is the work of even perhaps yourselves, or this halfling, or perhaps a, an unforeseen force within the city. The guild has existed for centuries. To lay blame at them, that is where evidence will be needed. But yes, call upon me if you wish for me to tell him uh, to confirm that this device does indeed channel power to and from the planar realms. Perhaps that will be enough, but I could not tell you for sure. I thank you for that. Of course. If I may, and I hope that you will not judge me, for remember, I am not of your culture or your world. My heart still lies within the Feywield. I care very little for the lives of the people here. I enjoy the beauty and the life that blossoms, but I could simply move, find that elsewhere. I lost my home. I lost my world. I lost something which you cannot begin to understand. What happens to Ash and Rest is of little consequence to me. Said with just the most placid face, just so honestly true. You don't even need insight checks. Like, there's no deception in this face. Blackwing just is pleasant but doesn't care. Just has no, is so apathetic to like your world, basically. Um, I think that's the thing is like Gruff would take a deep breath to try and start saying something. But I think being older and coming from quite a harsh climate, he sees the measure of Blackwing and just wouldn't yeah. bother. Yeah. It's a waste of his time. Sure. He can see that this creature has just such a firm conviction. There is just... Yeah, no... firm conviction is also just so ancient. Like, yeah. it's just hard to even begin to understand. Out of character, by the way, because the planar realms are basically... have existed since the dawn of time, they don't track things like years because they don't have, like, a calendar and anything like that. And when he said that... Well, when Black... When, when they said that they were third generation, what that means is the very first elves at the beginning of time are first generation. So he's, like, two lifetimes after the beginning of time mm -hmm. is their sort of... That's how long they've been around, right? That could be anything. Like, yeah. it, it's... The, the planar realms are this whole alien thing of, like, they are eternal, you know? Um... But yeah, but uh, Blackwing will just sort of smile and say, please make sure you enjoy food and drink before you go. It is late. You should rest. I hope that this will help you sleep, Rowan of Giant's Blood. He's got such big hands and yeah. such a little mug. It's like a little <laughs> tiny... He's but struggling it, to like see it. It's like almost like a, a few drops of dew off of a, off a leaf, like in a tiny little... Thimble of a cup. <laughs> He's worried about so crushing it. Um, and yeah, and then Blackwing will turn to Ophelia. I have greatly enjoyed meeting you, Sister Ophelia Della Rosa. The Greylands. You are clearly convicted and have great faith. I will give you the choice. I have seen them. I could tell you what I saw there, if you want to know. But I will warn you now, can anything live up to what you have imagined? Okay. I think Ophelia will be thinking about the tarot reading right now and how she's, in her mind, has engraved the phrase about her journey not having an end. And I think she would... Oh, she, I think she'd want to know what that end looks like so she has some kind of clarity. Mm. 
Yeah, I feel you want to know. Okay. Black one will come, will glide, doesn't walk, just glides. And looms, is like seven feet tall, like very, very tall, looms down. We'll reach out with a slender and to Ophelia, translucent skin, like veins visible underneath their skin, and a long finger just reaches out to touch your forehead. Do you stop them? No. When the finger touches your head, your mind becomes full of visions. You find yourself in another person's body in their perspective. A warrior, a mage. A slender rapier made of like twisted silvery wood and in a blade like a huge thorn uh, from some great plant, but strong as steel um, in one hand, in the other a carved wooden rod engraved with feathers and tipped with almost like a crow's head. You see underneath glimmering silvery male black feathers as <laughs> you are fighting against wave after wave of skeletal warriors that are just seemingly never ending. The figure that you inhabit blasts them away with a great blast of wind, summons up this swirling storm of like twisted uh, vines and roots and suddenly a blast of thousands of ravens as they clear a path and then they fly up into the air and you look out and you see a gray, plane of dust that stretches out as far as it can be seen. A void like sky with no stars of endless black stretches above. In the far distance you can see the remnants of crumbled necropolises and ziggurats long abandoned by any sort of life. You can see a still lake with not even a single ripple reflecting that dark void sky. And in the far distance, as this horde beneath you is being demolished by elven warriors sent forth from the Feywild to do battle, you can see rows and rows and rows of silent, stood warriors waiting for their next order. Blackwing pulls their finger away and suddenly you are back in the tower. Ophelia looks up, kind of like a, 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 pan, a wild panic flashes in her eyes for a second and she kind, she kind of just looks dejected for a second but then just brushes it away like nothing happened. It's been wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much for hosting us. You are most welcome. Your presence, your home, has made me feel so much at home. I am glad to hear it. You are always welcome here. And my offer stands. Bring me things and I can forge or weave items of power, enchantments, scrolls and the like. And if you are able to locate the Felite, I can create something to help you in your investigation. But you would need to source it. It would need to be from the Twin Pits. It need not be much, a small piece. I do not know how you would acquire such a thing here, but there may be ways. <laughs> just, in Gruff's head, I've just got this really sarcastic, oh, I'll just stroll on down to the shops and ask them for some hell, hell metal, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Just in his head, he's grumbling to himself. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Blackwing will sort of nod their head, be well, and then just leave when you wish. And goes to the stairs and just glides back up them, going about their business like, yeah, just leave you down here, doesn't really care what you do. Very, very distant. Oddly, alienly distant. Um, um, Rowan goes to gently pick up Teresa. Yeah. Flaps her out like a duvet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you pick her up. She, she's just seen, at this point, she's not like, she is, she's alive, but she's just sleeping. Yeah. Um, do we want to go to the cathedral? Like, Probably. Yeah. I think. 
getting quite loud. It's going to be some pissed off priests. Yeah, it's a matter of urgency. But they do, yeah. they do nighttime services and stuff like that, so it might not be too. Yeah, I'm guessing it's like. Did they not say it was 10? like open pretty much? It's open up until a point and then it will close down, yeah. yeah so okay. generally, once the nighttime service to Melia is done, the cathedral will kind of close down and lock the doors and things like also, that. Isn't there a weird time thing when we're in this spire? Like It can be. It's it's actually Blackwing chooses whether right. or not. They, and it, it's. They, you know, this is out of game knowledge. They can't do like a. You spend a day. It's not the hyperbolic time chamber, right? They can delay it by a certain amount, but not by too much. There's like a touch of the Fey wield about this tower, which means right. that they can sort of make it extend a bit of time. Okay. Mm. But yeah. Well, um, ready to go. Sorry, what? Where? Sorry? The cathedral. Oh! Yes, okay. Great. Uh, I don't really want to spend much more time in this tower. No, thank you. All right. Um, yeah. Rowan will lead the way back sure. out. Sure. Uh, out of prying crows and ravens. Ears. Yeah, yeah, you feel the same thing. You open the door and there's like a shadowy void and you step through it and you feel that sensation of being pulled forward and then you're outside. And the door's already shut behind you all. You know, there's... It, it, this is clearly not a mundane door. <laughs> uh, Rowan starts pacing back and forth. Just like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, that was a bit weird, right? Everyone can agree that was strange. Um and we're in over our heads, and I'm panicking, and this poor little halfling needs some attention, and we saw a demon cloud, and a, uh, there was a skull, and a feeler. I don't know what's going on there, but um, I'm a little worried. Why, why are you worried? You seem like you got touched on the forehead, mm. and you seem distant now. I'm, Did I'm... they cast a spell on you? No, 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 no spells. No, I've had enough of spells and whatnot, and it's it's fine. Everything is fine. Yes, I agree. Everything is not fine. No, everything is fine. Everything's terrible. Everything's on fire. Everything's the worst. What do we do? I don't know. <laughs> everything is fine. Can I insight on Ophelia? Sure. I mean, it's up to you. I think Rowan can read. Something's not right. I mean, I don't think you need an insight check <laughs> yeah. to know that something's not quite right. But I'm not going to tell you any more. <laughs> Rowan just thinks it's because of the terrible night we've had mm. and yeah. like how yeah. weird Blackwing was. Sure. Like, he doesn't know what you saw. Um, yeah, so. none of you saw that. Mm. Only if you did. I think um, Gruff will just run a very a paw over his very tired face at on, these Dad. clucking children. <laughs> Deep breath. Um, Everything Daisy. will be Hello. okay eventually, but we need to hold it together. I know it's trying, but you can't fall apart now. Mm. Can I fall apart tomorrow? Maybe, and if you can delay that to the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day, until everyone is safe, then okay. Okay. You do hear Nim in your mind, Daisy. And there's a sort of hesitation. You get the sense that Nim has thought of something but almost doesn't want to tell you it. Because you're so linked mentally, you kind of know that, but you don't know what Nim wants or is thinking or wants to say because they, their thoughts are kind of always... They only You only hear them when they are speaking directly to you. They are able to, like, keep thoughts mm -hmm. aside. Um... That is none of that. Tell me. What, what, what are you thinking? <sighs> the elf talked about obtaining felite, a metal of the Twin Pits. Now, we don't know which one we would need, but there are mortals of your realm who broker deals with the planar powers. You've met one. Okay. Not like you and I. Our connection is different. But there are those who make deals with the planar powers for magic, for wealth. And then there are those who help broker those trades. May be possible to acquire some of that metal or learn of somebody who could help us get some. 
via such a person. I don't trust them, I don't like them, but it is possible. Who is it? Do you remember the Tifling? No! Yes. No! They, they claim to be a broker of the elemental planes, but if they can broker for one, they may be able to broker for another, or at least know someone who knows someone. I don't know how to reach them, but it is worth keeping in mind. Mm. But also, I know a little of Felite. The fiends of the Twin Pits, their weapons are unlike anything we have seen elsewhere. My legions, we can fight using steel, as you do, but also there is a substance called Luxin that we are able to recover and use to create weapons and magic and, and such like. The fiends mine this metal, felite, and they harvest something called Hell's Blood from their own dark, disgusting pits that they call home. And with it, they have created weapons unlike that we have seen. Machines of metal and fire. Um, uh, arms that can... that can shoot out bolts of hellfire or shards of metal at high speeds. They are not as well trained as the Celestial Legions, but what they lack in skill and training they make up for in numbers and firepower. It is, it is powerful. And their cunning and adaptability is considerable. <sighs> okay. Me and my squadron destroyed many um, stockpiles of these weapons long ago, but this was all done in the planar realms, not on your world. Well, I didn't even want to entertain the fact about finding this thing in the first place, the metals. I just wanted to leave it be, because you said we don't trust Blackwing, so I was just going to not do the thing. Just no, no touchy pits of hell. I mean, I would prefer that as well. But should we? If we can detect things? There are a lot of innocent people here. In my old life, it would have been my duty to try and save them. Now I have the choice. If I had the choice because it's really your choice, little one. I would try and save them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so annoying, though. Duty, Being, like, is, duty is not good. easy. <sighs> Fine, fiery hell pits, rocks and metals from higher... Oh, I just don't want to talk to that stupid... Okay, fine. There is a, you get that kind of smile, that sense of fondness. Um, choosing to do what is right, even though it is annoying and scary. That brings me a comfort. Better yeah. to do it simply than because you must or because others force you to. Well, I want to do it. I just don't want to do the things that make me have to do the thing. <sighs> <laughs> We will, be, we will be careful. Okay. Well, I'll talk to the others. Yes. But maybe they're going to ask me how I know these things. That's the demon or the creature that came out of Teresa did know where I am from. It could sense me. So do I tell? That is your choice. Do I not? Daisy's doing her thing where she's just <laughs> staring at his face, but no. Um, yeah, she just, Lim, Nim just says, it is your choice, little one. Okay, I'll think about it. I do not know how clever your companions are if they will put these things together. But do if they, we? <laughs> if they do, they should, after what the elf told them, they will be able to know what I am. It's fine. Nothing can be as bad as whatever Xanthius is doing, because clearly he's messed that up. That is very true. Yes. <laughs> I that that Dragonborn, we really must get to the bottom of them. 
You're telling me. But that's fine. I'll think about it, but thank you. That's right. Thank you for your support. So, just before we go to break, where are you guys heading next? Do you want to try and head up to the Bright Shadow Cathedral? Is this a, we're going to, like, also keep in mind that, like, you guys are, like, knackered. <laughs> you've had a fight, yeah. like, you've not had a long rest. It's, like, you know, 11, yeah. it's probably, like, 11 p.m. at night now. Um, what do you guys want to do? I'm only up in, like, four hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rowan, despite uh, being tired, is pushing to go to the cathedral. Sure. And it's kind of like restless help. and yeah, on sure. the spot, pacing. Uh, oh. He needs to like help Teresa. Sure. Sophia, do you want to go with him? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It's a distraction. Yeah. Yep. All righty. Pretty yeah. much. I think we're all just like, ah. Sure. <laughs> with that, then we will, that will be the end of part one, and we will see you in part two. Um, join us uh, back for then. All right. Bye. 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 And welcome back to part two of Althea, the Dragon Empire. Our heroes have gone to Ravenstar Spire to meet with the Elven Mage Blackwing, explaining the events that have taken place in the plaza and asking Blackwing to analyze the broken Everlight uh, to discern the nature of the enchantment. The heroes have been given lots of information about the plane or realms, about the nature of this enchantment, um, and learnt much more at that. And now they make their way up into Duskrise uh, District to head towards Bright Shadow Cathedral. As you guys approach, you can now see it is about 11 p.m. This is the point where there is almost nobody else out on the streets. Uh, you do see the glowing lights of uh, the lanterns kind of posted you know, alongside the streets as you go. Um, are you still trying to avoid these lights as much yep. as possible? <laughs> Daisy is, like, kind of dotting around. Um, Serpentine. Yeah, I guess Serpentine. <laughs> whilst Rowan has Teresa, he mm. doesn't want any reoccurring yeah. while she's vulnerable, so sure. he so won't you, risk you it. You do manage to kind of avoid them as best you can. Um, as you get into Duskrise, you notice that the, light, the lanterns are more prominent here, um, and you also notice that stood outside of Bright Shadow Cathedral, there are two... Um, they're not full knights, but they are kind of um, priestly kind of warriors uh, that basically are here to guard the temple at night, the cathedral at night. Um, but also it looks like they are maybe the ones that, you know, if you have an urgent problem, you go and speak to them and then they they confer and, and so forth and so forth. Um, it is a, a female dwarf and a male human who are kind of stood there. Um, as they see, and they see you like there's there's no approach you can make that you're kind of you know not seen by these two guards uh, who are stood right outside the cathedral doors. Um, yeah. Hello. Hello. Can we help you? Is there? An, and they kind of see that you're carrying this unconscious halfling. Like, what is the meaning of this? Is this woman in need of help? Yes, a medical attention, if possible. <sighs> All I right. appreciate it, late. Thank you so much for your. Yes, of course. Uh, oh, is this? We have to ask, you know, have you tried um, healing spells? Is this, uh, what is the nature of yes. what is wrong with her? I've tried healing word and all the other regular medical checks. That She's still breathing, she's just all right. in a bad all right. way. Uh, we will send We will send for an acolyte to come and, uh, and meet them. We'll, we'll thank find you so wrong. much. Okay, well, yes, and you see the, um, the male, uh, the human man, like opens up uh, the door, steps inside, and then doesn't have you follow, like it's like, wait here, and then they go off into the cathedral. Um, after a little bit of time, this is where I've got to remind myself of NPCs, because cool. I remember I came up with a name, but I can't remember what it is. High Priest Arden. Oh, no. High Priest Arden, thank you. I didn't, I haven't updated my, uh, my spreadsheet. Um, after a little bit of time, uh, you see the doors open once again, and High Priest Arden, the um, the Nalinari, is there. This kind of very beautiful, radiant, uh, soft-looking, masculine figure, um, elven in nature, but very different to Blackwing. This is very clearly a humanoid. They have like elongated ears, but this dark kind of purple or obsidian, like dark purple skin. Um, these very vibrant eyes that seem to almost draw you in. Um, kind of appears dressed in not their priestly like ornamental robes they are basically wearing like a simple almost like a night robe 
um, not like a little, you know, sleepy gown and hat or anything like that, but like a very simple black cloth robe, um, kind of tied around the waist with a little rope belt, just like, oh my goodness, I'll bring her inside. Come, come, come inside. Thank you, I appreciate this is a late hour. Of course, aid. but yes, if this woman, the the guard told me that you have tried healing spells and it has been to no effect. What happened to this poor woman? Well, how did you become involved? And there is a sort of look of recognition, like, I think I've seen you somewhere recently and maybe more towards Gruff, like, you know. Get this main. Yeah, we also <laughs> saw you speaking with Morning and like, was just like, oh, uh, it's just like, yes, bring her inside. Um, and he takes you, he leads you through the empty cathedral, which is not lit up. It's all kind of darkened. There is just this faint, twinkling magical starlight that kind of rests in the top of the cathedral almost creating like a, a soft glittery silver light but it's barely enough to like weave your way through the pews and make your way to um, a set of doors that lead into the sort of Spectre side chambers against every pew yeah bong, 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 bong. Um, <laughs> you uh, the, of bunnies. <laughs> the high priest on takes you into a side room um, which seems to be maybe like a, a sleeping quarters for like a, a, a priest or an acolyte, but it's not being used. And says like, place her down on the bed um, uh, and, and tell me what happened. I point at Gruffus. <laughs> <laughs> and we, Gruffus can be like, I, you know, we give the recount similar to what you did for Black Ring, And it'll right? be the most honest account ever. Yeah, of course. You see High Priest Arden's face grows quite grim and sort of worried the lot, the more and more thing you go into. Like, the, he the hearing about the guilds kind of fighting, you see him kind of a bit disproving, almost looking at you guys a bit disproving of, like, oh, getting involved in these guild feuds, tut, 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 kind of naughty, naughty children. But then as you then recite the, the strange influence, feeling these, you know, this paranoia and this rage and this fear, and then suddenly Teresa being overwhelmed by this creature, um, do you actually say, like, you think it was like a demon from the plains and things like that. Okay, so when you it's say that, right? yeah. High Priest Arden immediately um, makes the sign of Melee. He like is like, oh, Lady of Secrets, but please save us. I, th this is terrible. Like, oh, I, I, I pray for this woman's soul that she's not been, not been ensnared in their clutches. <sighs> and you see, he raises his hands over. And he begins muttering a chant like, Lady of Secrets, Lady of Mystery, please unveil, unveil the truth. Let me know what afflicts this woman, what afflicts your steward or your servant. Um, and you see from his hands, this silvery moonlight begins to kind of fall like rain over Teresa. And he says, <sighs> and he raises his hand, he raises it like into the shape, like a kind of almost like a C shape. He kisses his hand and then he touches Teresa's forehead and you see her eyes kind of flutter and she begins to wake up. Oh. Um, he... Does a C, so Rowan does a C shape? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like a symbol of Melia. It's like a half moon, Doesn't basically. Doesn't very well, does a um, P. <laughs> and you see the high priest kind of like leans down, like gets on his knees and he like leans to her and he's like, what is your name? My dear, what is your name? And she, like, Teresa blinks. Oh, t t illum illuminated Teresa Lavendale. Well, am I at the church? I oh, hello, high priest. And sort of, like, seems to blink and kind of realize where she is. The high priest is like, you're all right. You're all right. Um, you've had a bit of a fright. Uh, your friends here have brought you here, and we're just going to keep an eye on you. Are you all right here on your own, just while I speak with your your friends? She's like, yes, yes, I'll be all right. I'm, I'm quite thirsty. <coughs> I'll have somebody bring you some water and maybe something to eat as well, all right? And then he says, all right, very good. And he says, like, would you come with me just outside? Um, and he leads you outside, um, and he you know, calls over the guard and says, like, can you get one of the acolytes to go and fetch just some bread and water and bring it bring it to the, the woman inside? And he takes you all out into the main cathedral and his expression is quite dark. There is, there was an affliction, some lingering trace of this planar magic. Um, I've done my best to disconnect Teresa, was it, I believe? I've done my best to disconnect her from this influence. And I believe that she will recover. Her health is fine. She's she's not in any danger oh, of that. 
My concern is of a spiritual nature. You see, he kind of rubs his hands. When we die, Saint Dithia. <laughs> Ronan just prepares himself. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. <laughs> really examining mortality, aren't we? <laughs> when we die, Saint Dethea strikes us with one of her arrows. She binds us to the world of Althea so that we can be reborn. Ophelia, this is all nonsense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolute garbage, this man is like, <laughs> <laughs> How dare! <laughs> Blasphemy! <laughs> we are tethered to the world by Saint Dethir, so we can be reborn. One of our greatest fears in the Church of the Scions is individuals who perhaps dabble with the planar powers, who seek them out for power, for cheap gains. They draw the attention of the planes, and they can anchor themselves on their soul. And when these individuals are killed, Dethir is not able to tether them to Althea, and they are taken, snatched by the planar powers to be reborn as warriors and soldiers in their eternal conflict. I fear that whatever this creature, this demon that you say was summoned, and possessed Teresa has left such an impression. And were she to die, there is a risk that Saint Dethir would not be able to secure her soul. Oh, that's awful. Is there anything we can do? With guidance, if Teresa is willing to commit herself to a virtuous life, avoids the temptations that is associated with the demons and devils of the Twin Pits. For they are creatures of greed, and ambition, carnage, uh, passion, power, rage, fear. If she is able to keep herself free from these temptations, it strengthens her soul against being taken away and gives death ear a greater chance of keeping her bound to our world. It will take spiritual assistance, but of course that is why I am here. It is why we are blessed by the Scions with the powers that we have to help people, to make sure in some cases they do not choose these paths and fall prey to the lies and the manipulations of the planes. And sometimes in this case, ones who are innocent of this, but have become touched by forces far beyond them. But she will recover. Uh, physically, she's fine. Um, it, is, it is the spiritual sense that I am concerned for. But you, were, you did very well to bring her to me. Very well indeed. And I am shocked. I am terrified to hear of what has happened. I, I pray that Illuminator Lavender did, Lavendale did not know what she was doing, and that perhaps this is the work of some nefarious cult that has perhaps used her position to do some nefarious deed. Um, I certainly hope that it was not some ploy of her own. We, we only have assumptions right now, and we do not wish to assume that the light weaver, La lamplighter guild. <laughs> <laughs> he says it correctly. Mm -hmm. Has anything to do with it from a guild sense, mm. and that it might be a case of sabotage? Well, it is important that we bring this to the attention of the authorities tomorrow. First light. Yes, that was the guidance we were hoping to seek because we are stuck in the middle of this. No, we, we must bring this to the attention of the High Authorita um, and to the Duke um, oh. that this can be investigated. Well, it just so happens that we have, we are going to the public uh, hearing as we have a writ. 
Excellent, yes. Well, the only problem with that is we've been advised that we really need strong evidence about the Lamplighters Guild before we bring you, it up with the Duke. Are you, con you, you seem convinced that the Lamplighters Guild is involved in this in some way. Uh, uh, only because we were sent on this mission and it was the equipment that was embedded within the light itself that we discovered. That is worrying, but the Lamplighters Guild have been a great part of this town for for centuries. They are they have provided a great service. They are close to my my sister, the high priest of, of Pyrus. Uh, I could not imagine that they would dare do, do trifle not, with such things. Do not exactly. get us wrong. Uh, we again are not accusing the entire guild maybe there's some mm. ne'er do wells that must be it it uh, the cults of the planar powers the cults of the embered are secretive and mysterious and they lurk within our society this is why we preach vigilance that good citizens such as yourselves keep open eyes and inform myself the knights of the church of or and our authorities of such matters for we must root out these cults wherever they may lurk i think my concern is that maybe if we act too fast this cult may get wind of it and oh my son but if we linger think of how many souls may be in danger yes there might be more lights that we may need to deactivate would you forward this information to the duke would you i i the church you i will help? speak with i will send word to the duke and i will personally speak with the authorities tomorrow thank you most certainly that's great of so course. helpful of course do not be troubled this will be resolved i'm sorry to bring such uh, unholy and blasphemous things to your church do you know how to identify a devil or a demon? You are, it, it is not, um, no, it is a, a wise question to ask, uh, son. It is a very wise question to ask indeed. From what I know, we are taught about the planar realms to make sure that we are warded against them, to know our enemy. We do not learn about them freely or because we choose to, but simply so that we better understand our foe. I have always been taught that demons are creatures of base desire, uh, carnage, rage, lust, greed. They are destructive. They cause suffering. Devils are, and they are, which makes them a simpler foe. Dangerous, um, dev dangerous, very dangerous. Devils are trickier. They are capable of deception, manipulation. Very rarely will they outright lie. And once their word is given, they are bound to it by planar law, I suppose, but they are very adapt at turning situations to their advantage. And when they want to be, they can be as cruel and as wrathful and as lustful as their demonic counterparts. It is lucky that the two pits are often fighting amongst each other, uh, that they do not turn against the other realms. For if they were to overpower the other planar realms, perhaps they would become dominant and soon their attention may fall upon our realm. Oh, boy. Well, it seems like someone's attention is on our realm, at least to try and get power over the Hellion throne. Oh, they almost always are. The, the material world of which Althea is, it is a realm, they covet it, the planar powers. They are greedy, uh, jealous of our world, for it is rich in resources and magic that is rare in theirs. Um, uh, but also we hold the greatest asset of them all. The one that all of the planar realms crave above everything else. Souls. New soldiers. For they have been in a stalemate since the beginning of time. The only way they, they break this stalemate is if one side were to gather up a huge force of new warriors and soldiers. Where can they find them but here? In the souls of the people of Althea and Ilmera. So it does make sense that there are more of these lights out there. I, 
I am despaired at the idea that any good citizen of the Empire would willingly put at risk so many souls, but... No, this is a matter that must be dealt with by the right people. I will send word to the High Authoritor and the Duke and to my own superiors. This is a grave matter that must be dealt with. Can I incite the Archduke? <laughs> of course you can. I do. I do love the idea that, like, is this trot inciting the priest or is this trot inciting Mark? <laughs> a little for column A, a little for column B. <laughs> well, we'll see what the dice say. See what those dice say. That is a uh, twenty-one. Oh, twenty-one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, now insight is not a lie detector, no, right? You can't just be like they are lying. Rowan is not an accusatory kind. No, of person, no. So. I would say that Rowan. <laughs> Everything, like, this priest clearly believes everything they're saying. Like, there is no doubt. This is a man of absolute faith conviction. Like, he he believes 100% what he's saying, and he believes that he has to do everything in his power to stop this happening, because there is no worse fate than all, potentially all of Ashen's rest being turned into demonic souls, like, and taken off into some demon plane. That is the worst. Anything is better than that. And with that insight, that's when you realize that, like, ah, this high priest, high priest Satan, might go to lengths that could put other people, like, it, he's willing to do anything to stop this. He is so devout in it. And when he said, I will send word to my superiors, you would probably pick up on that, like, that's probably going to be people who are going to come and start asking a lot of questions. And he's probably going to do everything in his power to make sure that, like, this is stopped. Whether or not that's actually going to be effective or not is another question, right? This man could easily be blinded by faith. Like, if, if somebody he believes is a true believer and is a truly faithful, devout person tells him, I didn't do it, he's probably going to believe them. He's blinded by faith. Well, wheels are in motion now. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Be at peace. I will make sure that Teresa is attended to and looked after, and when I send word to the authorities, they will want to speak with her, and I will make sure that she that uh, that happens. Uh, we will make sure that this is dealt with. Please, do not trouble yourselves. We, we will make sure that this is done right. One last thing, Father. Of course. Uh, could we, well, those who agree to it, could we have a little blessing? It's been a long night, and I think we could use some calm and some guidance. Of course, and it is, of course, it is my lady's time. Uh, and there is nothing, one of the most sacred duties of Melia is of dreams. Uh, it is very much a part of what I do to make sure that you have restful sleep and that uh, the night is a place of safety for you. That is my calling. Come. And he'll lead you out into the main uh, into the main altar, um, and uh, High Prince Satan will conduct a small ceremony for those who wish it, um, which is a blessing. It's like a spiritual blessing. So like Daisy and Ophelia kind of maybe slinking back Am I, away. Like, yeah. Can I sneak away and talk to Teresa? Yeah, give me a stealth check though. Like how well you kind of slip away. I'll give you advantage because Just he's as soon as Gruff asks for the blessing, like you can see High Prince Aiden is like, oh, oh it's my course, time. my son, absolutely. Thirteen. Thirteen. Thirteen's enough. They, this guy's pretty perceptive, but he's very distracted right now. So I'd say like you managed to slip away. Um and you probably make your way back to that room and you see a servant, like a, a simple dressed young, probably teenage boy, like a kind of like um, choir boy kind of like, you know, robe, is leaving, probably having just dropped off food and drink. Um, and you can easily slip inside. Cool. Um, but yeah, just very briefly, Gruff, absolutely, this is a traditional blessing of Melia, um, and it is uh, a kind of prayer about, you know, the safety of night enveloping you to make sure that the Lady of the lady of Mysteries visits your dreams and gives you peaceful sleep and brings you, you know, wonderful rest and beauty and things like that. It's, it's a very kind of traditional prayer, and it is a minor blessing in that it will make sure that you don't have any unpleasant dreams this evening, um, or unpleasant visitations, I should say, as well. Does Rowan wish a blessing as well? Yep, Rowan yep. will sit there and he'll be thinking to himself, I hope you got my secret well. I hope, sorry, it's a bad one. Yeah. 
Maybe. And uh, the, she digests it nicely. Nice. All right. Um, is Daisy, yum, yum. where's Daisy going to slip off to? Or is Daisy just hovering at the back kind of thing? I'm probably going to... I think she might... What's your passive like... perception? Oh. <laughs> I mean, Roth did say for those 11. who wanted it. 11? So. You... Ophelia vanishes. You don't know where Ophelia is. Because oh. you got 13. It's a passive perception of 11, right? She's on the floor there. Army calling. <laughs> <laughs> So you look, you look around, Gruff and Does Rowan are having ceiling. this blessing, and you're like, oh, yeah. where the fuck is Ophelia? Yeah. Spider climbing away. She is, she's seen you do that, so she's gonna go. <laughs> start looking around. Mm. You start wandering this massive, empty cathedral, like looking up yeah, at the yeah. ceiling. She's um, just gonna, she's just gonna dawdle about. Yeah, like, sure. <laughs> means that you can avoid you avoid the blessing easily. Where did she go? <laughs> All right. So she's uh, gonna jump out and scare me, I know it. <laughs> So meanwhile, Ophelia, you sneak into Teresa's room and like Teresa's there and she's like munch. She's torn off like she's not eating the whole bread, but she's torn off a bit and she's trying to munch it. She's drunk most of the water and she's like, oh, oh, hello, hello again. Um, do you all right? Yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. Teresa, my dear, do you remember anything about what happened during um, that fight? Sorry to bring it up. I know it was horrendous. No, no. Well, um, I remember. And she kind of adjusts her glasses and, like, you know, she's got these big kind of goggles. She's a little halfling, so she's got little toes and feet poking out. Um, <laughs> and she's like, oh, well, I remember um, we, we the first group we fought from the Carpenters Guild and you saw them all off and I remember I helped you fight some of them. And then I fixed the Everlight and I had the, I had the, the new disc and the enchantments and the pieces. The new disc, do, do you know who gave you that? Well, the Chief Illuminator. He was the one who, who showed me how to make the repairs. The Chief Illuminator, what? Do they have a name? Uh, uh y yes. Um, of course, it is, um... Go get my notes. <laughs> what I, is I, it? I have it, I have it, I have it. It's just in my notes. Uh, I've got to find him. Um... Yes, um, um, Morris Goldsight, uh, the Chief Illuminator. Morris Gold site. Yes. Any, was there anything unusual about the disc? Anything oh. broken? Anything oh, was I, it amiss? I, I don't. I don't remember though. But I mean, like I said, it was my first time. This is my first time doing these mm. repairs. Uh, but yes, I had the schematics and I was following his instructions. And I had the disc and, and I, I fixed it. It was working as intended, and I could see the power was all done. And then and then that other guild came by, and. They all rushed us, and, and mm. I just felt so afraid. And, and I've never felt that frightened in my life. And then, oh gosh, I heard this most ghastly voice. And it was, it was telling me that I was going to die and that they were going to, they were going to kill me and do all sorts of horrible things to me when they found me and, and that I, I was going to die alone and it was awful. It was saying these horrid things to me. That sounds terrible. And then I must have passed out and I think I must have had an awful dream because I remember sort of flying in the air and, and I was, uh, I was fighting the, the people from the guild and, and, there was this uh, terrible sort of um, cloud uh, around me. Uh, and yeah, that, that was all I sort of remember. A cloud, okay. Do you, and you don't see, you remember seeing anything else, like a figure or, a, a, I, don't, I don't know, a, a, a demon, a devil or anything of that description? A devil? Well, that voice. Oh, that voice wasn't anything from, oh, it was awful. It was, oh, it wasn't human. I tell you that, it was, it was something it was terrible. When I was dreaming, how do you mention it? It was like I was, I was flying and I was surrounded by this cloud and, and, and the people, it was like I was very high and the people were so small and I was, I was throwing lightning and fire and all sorts of horrible things down, but... Mm. I, you know what? It was like something was holding me up. It was like something had me in, in like a claw, mm. and it and it had these terrible wings, and its face was it was like a it's almost like a pig face, and its belly was it had like a mouth in its 
belly and Ooh. and she, and you can see that as you've asked her, like she's beginning to remember more, and she starts shuddering, like, oh, it was awful, and it stank. It was it reeked of 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 like rubbish and 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 oh, like the sewers. It smelled like it was awful. Oh, that sounds like a oh. horrible, a horrible dream you had. A really nasty, horrible dream. Yes, no, it was awful, wasn't it? Well, I, I mean, maybe the, I, the high priest can can make sure we don't have bad dreams. I, yes, I'll ask him yes. for a blessing or, or something. Also, uh, is everything all right? I, I, I'm so sorry I didn't no, fix no, the no, lanterns. You're no, going to miss out on your payment. You did a perfectly good job. Don't you worry about that. We just, I just wanted to make sure that you're okay. And also, we want to bring this up with the duke tomorrow. So we just want to. I want to just. Make sure that you... Re oh, well, oh, come and fetch me. I, well, of course. Is I mean, it OK? Can we do that? But you want to bring it up to the Duke. Why? What, the, what, the, the guilds? I mean, they, it's terrible mm. that the way they came and fought. They, the, why do they want to stop the progress of the Lamplighters' oh, Guild? that horrible smoke. The, 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 the fog. Smoke? You said the fog, the clouds that came out. What, from a dream? For the, yes, we just want to make sure that everything's in place and the, I wouldn't worry the, the, the duke with my dreams. Well, it's, it's my friend, not at all. That's that's fine. We just want to make sure that everything's okay. That's all. And that's very kind of you. You've been very kind to me. Thank you. That's okay. No, don't, don't worry. And thank you for, you know, holding on and of course being here. Of course, uh, no, of course. And she's just like sort of like oh, I. I think I should probably get some sleep and yes. hopefully rest a bit better. But yes, come find me in the morning. Um, but yes, no need to trouble the duke. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it sorted, won't we? We will, we will. And uh, just um, your faith is yours to decide. Don't some there will be questions, but ultimately it's your choice. Oh, oh well, um, well, thank you. Yes, uh, all right, I, I will. Just seems to I know you seems like your your act of kindness to come in and check on her does seem to be well received. Blessings of the Grey Father to you. Uh, oh. Another faith. I'm sorry to confuse you. Um, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm dreadfully I... sorry. I'm filling your head with some so much nonsense. You've had enough. Uh, You've had a long day. Well, no, it's all right. And like you said, it, it's well. I suppose you're right. I mean, I guess I've always been raised that you know the Church of the Science is what we believe in. But I've heard that there are some people who believe the Empress has returned, mm -hmm. and there are. Well, you're from another land, aren't you? I am. I'm from Osseus. And yes. you must have a different. Oh yes, the Grey Father. Like that. I brought up earlier. Yes. Oh, I, I, Perhaps one day you can tell me about it. Oh, I'd love to. Of course, of course. Um, yes, rest, I would like gone. that. Yes, thank you, rest. thank you. I'll, I'll finish this bread. Um, can't can't leave it uneaten, can oh, I? Oh, no, good bread is good bread. <laughs> <It's worth. laughs> Full hobbit, just like, nom, 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 start stuffing in her mouth. Um, but yeah, she she seems very receptive to it. Yeah. And, uh, and you can sneak back out, and you probably make your way back in just as the high priest is finishing. You see Daisy, like, Wandering around, looking up at all the ceilings, um, she hasn't noticed you. Um, <laughs> but do you, do you just appear next to everyone, or just like just appear next to Daisy? <laughs> ah! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi. Hello. I went... Hi. Sorry, sorry. I went to go talk to Teresa. Okay, you could have just told us that. Well, you don't, don't need to jump out on me. Sorry, I it's didn't... been a tense evening. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't want to cause any alarm or... You did! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm alarmed! Teresa remembers a lot and she said that she can come to the hearing tomorrow. Oh, that's good! For more evidence. Good! I'm sorry, I'm just regaining... <laughs> no, but... You're in that thing of like... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, um, uh, yes, it all, it all went well. What, what, what are you up to? Not looking for you on the ceiling. Oh, that's okay. I just walked. I didn't. I didn't climb. Okay. Okay. So with that, yeah, <laughs> Gruffin. Walk back to Gruffin. Yeah, yeah. These guys are like finishing <laughs> up. Like you've both been sort of received this blessing. Um, the high priest returns, like completely unaware that you've gone and spoken to Teresa. Um, and yeah, you guys. Uh, he's like, well. Like I said, please do not worry. We will have this all straightened out tomorrow. I will speak with the Duke and the authorities. Um, where are you staying so that if I need to reach you? We are staying at the Clever Toad. Ah. Grumpy Hog for me, oh. if you need me. All right, all right. Well, very good to know. I will send word if need be, all right? But go with the Lady of Mystery's blessing. Sleep well. Ah, you've brought me so much peace in this trying time. <laughs> That is what I am here for, my son. And you just Thank pat you your arm, because like looking up. Um, yeah, all right. 
Um, and then, yeah, do you guys, what? what's the plan? Betty buys. I feel like we're all dead on our feet right now. <laughs> sure, yeah. Sorry, uh, Ophelia, for that, you know. One day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are attaining being dead on our feet. <laughs> um, so I feel like, yeah, everyone goes back to... Their various inns. Crash. Oh, do we need to check on Percy? Yeah, we should actually check, check on, on Percy. Percy yeah. Make sure and the queue. Yeah. And then that's the last thing we'll do. So. Oh, oh no. no. You guys make your way to the Ducal Palace. You make your way through the town. Um, and it's a fair distance away. Probably you get there probably around midnight. With everything, the blessing and the talk and everything else. Very on. much feeling very worn out. <laughs> feeling that tiredness and that fatigue settling <laughs> <Percy>. in. <laughs> when you arrive, um, you can see Percival stood in his robes on the road leading up to the Ducal Palace. Um, you, I, I met, feel free to correct me, but I imagine you wouldn't have said, tr go right up to the gate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. just stand there, because that might look a bit obvious. But he's clearly waiting, like, for, like, whatever this procession's going to be, this waiting line to get into the Ducal Palace. Um, and as you arrive, you see that Percival is basically moving around the street, constantly trying to avoid a group of um, stonemasons um, and lamplighters guilds uh, people who are basically trying to get hit, like, like, what are you doing here? Like, this is like, we're, you know, who sent you? Like, who are you working for? Like, questioning this robed figure that they don't know who it is. And the skeleton is just like, well, the robed figure is just <laughs> moving away from them. And they're like trying to surround him and then he'll turn and run away <laughs> and like oh. move. But then as soon as they like go to leave, he just goes back to where he was. <laughs> and these, you can see, and they're like, they're kind of like the street thugs, like kind of like they're the lower ranking members of these guilds. Clearly the ones who are sent to go and like, like make sure nobody's going to take our spot, even quite late at night. And they've obviously just come to be like, oh, let's just go scope it out. And there's this like figure who's just stood there and they're like, what are you doing? Who do you work for? What guild are you with? <laughs> just nothing. And then they like go to like shove him and immediately like Percival backs away and they're like, what do you what and they're like, yeah, oi, come here, and then they're like chasing him around. And but he but his orders are to stay in that place, so whenever he can, he just goes back to it. <laughs> and you guys happen to come along as they've probably gone away, and now they've come back with like some clubs and things <laughs> like that. <laughs> and they're like, oi, they're like, listen. You need to get out of here. And Percival's just like back to the thing. And you guys arrive as this group of people are making their way towards oh. Percival. Oh. There's there's like five or six of them. Felix just like, well, she's she's gonna just start dashing up towards yeah, Percival. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Like, Do you see the, this group of people? And they're not like, you know, these are these are like I said, these are lower ranking members of the guild. They kind of turn around and see you and they're like, oh, wh who are you? What's your business? Like, no, what's your business with him? He's with us. Leave him alone. They like look at you and say, like, well, who are you with? Like, this is, there's an audience with the Duke tomorrow. Yes, we know, that's why he's here. They kind of like look around, they kind of try and eye you all up. Give me an intimidation check with Ophelia. Um, you can use strength if you'd prefer, or you can use charisma. Uh, <laughs> Face he dies. You've already rolled it. Already rolled it. Three. I remember three. No. Uh, this he looks around. He looks at the tiny girl. Immediately, like not a threat. Uh, looks at Rowan, who's like Rowan is like big, trying to figure out which C it was. It's like is it like do I do the C for the other people? Do you, what was it? Yeah. Um, they look at that gruff. They're a bit wary of, and like you, but they're like these gruffs are like listen. We're with, and you can see that there's two packs of them. There's like three from the stonemasons and three from the lamplighters. They're like. Listen, we represent the stonemasons and the lamplighters. We are going to take the first spot to speak with the Duke. You don't want to cause trouble. Like, the guilds, we can make it very difficult for you. So just have your weirdo in the robe go back with you. My best friend. Take your weirdo, come back in the morning once we've got our places secured, and then you can come back in. I'm gonna step up behind Ophelia while she's collecting. It's definitely like, I'd say Gruff and Rowan's 
physical appearance, like you can make another intimidation if you want to make they'll give advantage. As well. Yeah, this is very clear, like giving advantage, right? Of like Daisy's two imposing up. looking figures. Even though she's not imposing, she's gonna pretend like she is. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. She could do um, it. Is there a problem here? Yeah, there is a problem, big oh, guy. That's a shame. That's a real shame. Why is that? Well, do you are you in, do you represent someone? No, I just I think it's only fair that our dear friend here is, appears to be first in the queue, and it's not very right of the guilds to try and change that. Well, there's definitely a kind of like he's like looking at you like you can't be you're not this clueless. He's like, well. It is unfortunate, but there is a certain way that things are done around here, and we have very important business with the Duke. And so we want to make sure that our spot in the queue is unaffected. And he, like, reaches in his pocket, and he can see that you two are kind of these big imposing figures. Like, they're definitely not the biggest warriors. He, like, reaches in, he pulls out a little pocket, and he, like, counts out five gold coins. And he's like, why don't you take this and take your friend and you come back after we've secured our places? You can be third in line. And he, like, jangles this little coin pouch. Like, here you go, peasant. Here's, here's some money. Uh, Rona put up his... Beefy hand. Do you have that in bronze? <laughs> yes. I look at Gruff, <laughs> interested. <laughs> look, oh. <laughs> we're not going to take that long speaking to the Duke. We're not here often, so why don't you just let us go first, get out of the way, and then we can help you save your spot in line right behind us. Make a persuasion check for me. <laughs> This is not going to go well. But okay. okay. You do the dice. Fight this. Fight this. Fight dice. Fight this. Fight sure. this. Oh. I keep forgetting. No. They're both going to get burnt, right? Ah. Uh, no, no, I'm not spending one. Oh, okay. I'm adding one to my pocket. It's only six total. Oh, six total. They rolled terribly. Uh, you see uh, this guy just say, we, we could do that, or we could just make you take your weirdo and leave... And then we go first to see the Duke. Listen, we have substantial backing. You guys, who do you even work for? Are you just here to what? To see the well, Duke on your own business? Like, just what's a that about? Job for the Lamplighters Guild, actually. You see the three from the Lamplighters Guild like look at each other. Like, we didn't hear anything about that. Repairing the lamps. Who are you working for? Who? 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 Who's your contact in the guild? Alicia, Alicia Tefio. Tefio is not important enough to sanction something like that. Well, it was the bounty on your little bounty board. <laughs> they like you see the three lamplighters look at the stonemasons and go, mm. uh, and they like, well, if they're working for the guild, they can go behind us in the queue. And the stonemasons are like, hang on. We've had an agreement for years, David. Like, he's <laughs> like, listen, David, we've had an agreement for years. We go first, you go, you know, you, you go first, we go second, and then everyone else comes behind us. That We've had that deal for years. And he's like, yeah, but David, this is David. He's like, yeah, they work, but they're doing some work for the guild. So maybe we let them go second this time. Is the stonemasons going to have a problem with that? And he's just like, you see the other guy kind of backs down. We'll call him Ben. Because <laughs> I can't be bothered coming up with fantasy names. <laughs> ben is just like, yeah, all right, I guess. Fine. They can go behind you as long as we're right after them. Uh, and you see the stone, uh, the lamplighter is uh, David. Uh, David the lamplighter is just like, yeah, I think that that, that. He looks to the your group. He's like, that seems reasonable to me. And you may keep your coin. Oh, yeah. I will say, well, yeah, of course. But uh, that seems reasonable to me. The lamplighters will take the first slot. You can have the second. And then our friends in the Stonemasons Guild go third. How about that? And you won't even have to have your poor friend stood out here all night. I mean, he must be cold. He's quick on his feet. I give him that. It's quite weird, quite weird that he's so silent, but... Oh, he's a 
well-trained individual. I and I appreciate that. I appreciate people who have good people working for them. But let, let, let's let's make a deal. Let's let's put that on the cards. We don't want any trouble, right? No, of course not. Yeah. You know, and we we have eyes on this street, so we we'll make sure that that order is adhered to in the morning. Insight. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, you can give me an insight check. I just don't trust anyone today. I don't trust him. No. Eleven. Reading his body language, there's nothing giving away that he's like hiding something. There's no ticks, no like glances to the side, like he's looking at you dead in the eyes. Yeah, it's just nothing. Like offers his hand out. He's a human guy. What choice do we have? Well, I feel like it's whoever gets here first gets the first spot, but clearly that's not working. If only the world was so simple. Fine. I All right. extend a hand. Yeah, he'll take your hand, shake your hand. All right. See you in the morning. Oh, I am quite sleepy, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Kim's just giving me, for podcast listeners, Kim is giving me a look right now. <laughs> Kim's just like, this is what I want to do. Oh, that was just a feature that he has that I was looking up, but... Oh. You can, if you want to do something, but... No. All right. I will leave it. Um, do you want to, you could leave Percival here or you could take Percival back with you. It does seem like these guys, if they stick to their word, who knows, they, might not. Mm, they might not. I kind of I want to would... switch places with Percival. Oh. <laughs> so you stay out <laughs> here all, all night? night. Yeah. 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 I mean, technically you don't need to switch places with him, he can just stay with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can just... I want to stay with him. Yeah, if you want to. To some degree. Yeah. Wouldn't be my first all nighter. <laughs> no true. The Knowles. Hmm, yeah. Just trying to think. But yeah, you see the uh this kind of little gang of like these guild lackeys um we kind of make their like way assessing if we all just leave. <laughs> We're just checking. Yeah, they well over. you see that like basically they seem to go to a house. Like they right. seem to both have houses on this street. <laughs> and they have like <laughs> they have like windows that look on this no, street. Just looking out. And they basically they go in, in there and you can see a light is lit <laughs> in the morning. And like one of them's in the like watching the street. Because like, they that's their this yeah, is their job, it, right? Yeah. It's like Amazing. Yeah. And if anybody oh, if they see anybody walk up, they come out and they're like, <laughs> then, like right? Oi, get back there. Oi, you. Yeah, I'm here. Like, they literally have that, right? That's awesome. Um, Are they British? Wait, no. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, technically. Well, yeah. People love a cue. Yeah. But, are they uh, tutting? But yeah, they're definitely, like, they're kind of keeping an eye. They're, like, looking out, like, what are they doing? Are they yeah. going? They should be, why aren't they leaving? <laughs> you know. Brilliant. You know, you see, like, one of them is, like, they've, they've got one ready to, like, head off to the guild HQ and be like, oh, boss, they won't leave. They've taken our spot in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but they kind of leave you guys on the street to like talk. So, but as far as our own could tell, they seemed pretty on the up, uh, up and up with that deal. Yeah, we don't really have a choice. No, no. no. I mean, you do. Unless we, <laughs> you just beat them up. Yeah. <laughs> you just beat them up and like, yeah. think, you know, just Should be like, die. right, with my nineteen health. Yeah. I mean, considering what's, more what's already gone on, and we don't want to cause any more upset no. between the guilds. We don't yeah. want to, like, had a bad I, evening. We don't really want to... I, I think that's the thing. The reality of Gruff is he was ready to get fighting or getting, like, mean yeah. or something like that, but also he just realised, I am so fucking tired. <laughs> like, I just want to go to bed. Do you do a cat stretch? <laughs> <laughs> a big stretch. Big Off yawn. Bed. You know when the cat's <laughs> yawn and, yeah. like, it's just... Yeah. You can see all the teeth all the way back, yeah. yeah. Fingers go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. We've done as much as we can. Let's go to bed and maybe a premonition or two. <laughs> Just to make sure tomorrow's going to go okay. Sure, of course. Just don't stay up all <clears throat> night with that machine. I don't have enough coin otherwise. <sighs> um, Ophelia, are you going to stay here with Percival or are you going to go back and sleep? I'm going to stay. You're going to stay? Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. I don't, I don't trust him. All right. He's your boy. And he's my boy. I've got to be with my boy. Yeah. Well, you could take your boy back with you. Like, if they're, if they're going to honor their That's end of the agreement. They're not, they're not, they're not their sure. Agreement. Absolutely. All right. So, the three, so Rowan, Daisy, and Gruff are going to head back to the Clever Toad. Yeah. And Ophelia is going to. I'm just gonna... assuming that Ophelia's gone to the Grumpy. Uh, the... Well, Ophelia doesn't Grumpy. leave with you, I'm assuming. You just no. stay in, in just You just bye. stay in the street. Like, bye. See you later, guys. Make sure you get some rest, Ophelia. Yes, I will try. Great. But I will hold the spot in the queue. I will guarantee we get that spot. 
Okay. What? Per- Percival's doing that. Yeah. I know, but I'm worried about him. I don't want him to come to any harm. Those guild members, we know what they're like. Rough and tumble and all that. Do you want me to stay? No, no, you go get some oh, rest. I, you can, I can carry stay it around, Teresa, like. all night. Your arms are probably very sore. She was very light. Probably very sore. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You get some rest. I will be here. I... Okay, I... Maybe, maybe bring a bottle of wine. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll do that. Mm, sure. Sure. <laughs> you can go to the Grumpy Hog would still be open. You can pop in. Uh, oh. It would cost you, uh, it would be, I'd say, five gold for a bottle of right. wine. Yeah. And then you can deposit it with Ophelia um, yeah. and then make your way back to the Clever five Toad. Gold for it. Sure. All right. Please. <laughs> it's on me. No, 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 no. You're you staying it. in the queue. It's fine. The wine is, is no. perfect. No, no, no. Hands are in my pockets now. What is the reaction of the guilds to the fact that Ophelia's just camped out with a whole bottle of wine and they 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 are there. gonna they are gonna stay in their little rooms, but there's definitely they're like you know if we if we could see, you guys don't see this, but we would see it like they better remember that we're first. <laughs> like, it's it's kind of like like we're we're gonna be first. <laughs> like they can stay there, but we're gonna be first tomorrow. Is there tutting as well? There's a bit of sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? Oh, why, are they, why is she still there? There's <laughs> <laughs> definitely a bit of that going on. It's like yes. on my street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cut and twitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbourhood watch. <laughs> Nosy neighbours. Um, but yeah, you guys make your way back. Um, when the three of you head back to the Clever Toad, uh, you enter. Hello, welcome! As the chorus of the kobolds echoes Hello. out. Uh, there is something different oh, no. about the bar tonight. Oh, no. Uh-oh. It's empty. There is one, there's a couple of drinkers, but they're basically passed out. But this is the first time you've entered. There are only two or three kobolds work in the bar. Normally there's like five or six. Um, It's quite quiet, it's quite late. And you see a quite bulky hooded figure sat right by the door as you come in. And you hear a kind of deep croaking voice. Oh, you guests. Do you have rooms here? Yes. Where's your keys? Show me your keys. Oh. Uh, uh, show me your key. And you see just the faint reptilian like scale <laughs> snout from underneath the hood. Oh god, oh. it's the one. It's the it's big the one. one. It's the one they don't let come I out. See. It's the <laughs> big boy. What was we you didn't get his name. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, whoever has the key. Again, yeah, yeah. The key. Limpsy. Very good. You can come in. What was your name, sir? What? <laughs> you, want, you want to know my name? Yeah? Right. The little hood kind of glances around, and he stands up. And he's short. He's like a dwarf, but he's wide. <laughs> it's, he's like a dwarf proportions, but you can see he's a swalbold, you know? <laughs> you see, swalbold! You see these thick, corded muscles with draconic scales, oh. and his color matches the other Tarex. Oh and then he pulls the hood down, and you see this kind of really burly classic mercenary right like he's got scars down his face one of his tooth is like is he's got these two big protruding like fangs one of them's been snapped off his horn has been broken off and then reattached and looks like iron plates have been like (laughs) stamped in to hold it back in place you can see that he's covered in weapons He's got, like, uh, a pair of brass knuckles on one ginormous <laughs> fist. He's got a big, heavy, like, kosh. Um, and then it looks like he's got, like, uh, what looks like almost like a whip as well on his back. Nice. Um, he's covered in, like, bits of, like, armor, like, scale mail that's been salvaged and, like, cobbled together from, like, bits of leather and bits of metal. Like, it looks very ramshackle. But his legs are a little bit too... Th- like, he's definitely, like, a... Skip no, he skipped day. leg day, right? <laughs> um, he's got Doritos a big. He's got like a big chunky tail, but his legs are a little bit too thin. Yeah. He's all biceps and back <laughs> and shoulders, you know. Um, and he like pulls the hood back, and he's like, 
That was a roast one, I boo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Barrick Terrick. I'm, Hi Barrick. I'm I'm Big Brother. Oh. Hello. And you see the other kobolds are just, you know, kind of like you know, they're like paying attention, but he's he's definitely the odd one out of the family. <laughs> he's like I, I'm sorry if I scared you, but I'm, it's my job to look after the inn at night. It's my job to ask questions after nightfall. <laughs> and you did a great job. Thank you. Wonderful. I just need to. I need to see a key to know that you're staying here. No, I felt worried when you when you when you were questioning us. I was. Oh, you, you, you've got nothing to worry yeah. about as long as you actually supposed to be here and you don't cause trouble. I don't have anything to worry about. Well, I'll sleep sounder for knowing that you're guarding the inn. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a good soldier. You look it. Thank you, thank you. Very ferocious. I'm sorry, thank you very much. I try and, you know, I, I work out. <laughs> yeah. You know? And then my, Mama Tarek makes sure I get all the best, all the best meat, because I'm big. Very big. Not as big as him. No. He, like, points at Rowan. Do you want to arm wrestle? <laughs> Yes, I do. Oh, I, I like arm wrestling. Which arm are you going to use? The brass knuckle? No, I'll take them off. That's very kind. Hmm. Uh, they're a bit stuck on. You can I'll do the other arm. I'll do right. the other arm. <laughs> they're like wedged on. He's worn them for so long. It's like a ring. You can't uh, get it off. He's like, oh, I can't get them off. I'll tell you what. <laughs> okay. Let's make this exciting. Arm I'm wrestling's wager. already exciting. Whoever wins. Yeah. Has to get the other one a clever toad premonition. Oh, I love the clever toad. I love the clever toad. Are we best friends? I think we're best friends. Brass <laughs> knuckle. <laughs> 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 yeah, he does it with the brass knuckle. Ow. <laughs> but no, he um, he's got like a little table. Yeah. And you see, he doesn't. He doesn't have a beer. He has like a little hot chocolate. It's still steaming. Oh, marshmallows. Um, no marshmallows. He has um, those little meat sticks that the other okay. cobbles make. He's, he's there, but there's like piles of empty sticks. Yeah. Like there's like twenty empty sticks on his plate. Um, but he sits down and he kind of like moves things away and he puts his big left hand. He's he's a strong lad. Um, and he puts his and he's like, all right, wish to free. Of course. All right. It's just a straight athletics check. Yeah. Everyone. Oh, I'm gonna fate dice. Yes. Sure. <laughs> All right. Do you want to add the? You got a d6 there. Got one here. Uh, <laughs> nine. Nine. <laughs> um, is it that your? That's your total. Total. Oh, ten. He does. Oh. So it's close though. It's like oh, he's like well, I haven't warmed up properly, but you're good. But he kind of gets you down. He's Mighty like, oh, warrior. No, you're You've good. Been battled many times. I, I've, I've had a few fights. I used to. I was in the Duke's army for a while, Whoa. but then, then my dad got sick, and I came back to work here. Oh, you did the right thing. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway. I like the army. I, they used to take me around, and um, sometimes when the bandits got in trouble, they'd send they'd send me in first. Barrack the ball, they called me, because I would ball. I'd go in and I'd break it like a boulder. Yeah, yeah. Barrick the Boulder. Oh, that's a good name. That's better than Barrick the Ball. Yeah. I remember that. All right, second round. <laughs> I'm going to spend a fade dice because I've got loads. Well, you best burn that then. Oh, burn it. <laughs> all right, so you get getting a D6 as well. <laughs> Using all the fate on the arm wrestle. 14. You are thrown. <laughs> oh, <that's so laughs> in that 20. In that 20. Oh my god. 28, I got him. So oh he literally god. is like. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, you go through a table, slide along the floor, and then he's immediately, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he comes and he like helps you get you back on yeah, your feet. Rowan gets up. I got I get too into me arm wrestling. And he does the standing up clap that gets faster and faster. <laughs> oh, no, I, you're not hurt, are you? No. That's good. I'm emboldened by power. <laughs> emboldened. Emboldened. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you a grumpy. I owe you a clever toad. You won. I owe you. You owe me a clever toad. <laughs> clever toad. Yeah. I give it my last bronze. All right. Oh. And then we both hobble over to the uh, clever toad together, sure. excited like kids. Don't you have a? Wasn't it best of three? Yeah. Well, he yeah, won two rounds. Round. Oh yeah. 
He won two rounds. Meh. Meh. Um, all right, you clever toad it. <laughs> yes, please. What does the toad say? The toad says. Oh, toad. I've got a big day tomorrow. Prepare. Duh. Is this for him or is it for It's Barrick? for Barrack. This is for Barrack. Because yeah. you pay for Barrack, yeah. Prepare for a great surprise. <laughs> In the shadow of destiny beneath the moon. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Do you understand what this means? I'm going to be honest. No, I don't have a clue. Wait. Best friend, what's your name? I'm Rowan. I'm Barrick. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. The boulder. The boulder. Yeah. And he like looks over. He's like, Winnick, I'm the boulder now. Barrick the boulder. I thought you was Barrick the bull in the army. I was, but my best friend just came up with a better name. I'm Barrick the boulder now. Oh, all right. <laughs> Doesn't it suit him? Yeah, yeah. You can see, you don't need an insight to check this. Every other kobold of the Tarek family is terrified of Barrick. Oh. Like, Aww. they they're just like, whatever Barrick wants. <laughs> yes. It. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, br brilliant name, bro, bro, yeah, great name. Yep. Yeah, brilliant. I'll, right, we'll tell the, the rest of them. I love you. They do. They, they, they're great. I love them. Oh. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> been a long day. Yeah. I've got to go back to my stool. I've got to go get some sleep. Meeting the Duke tomorrow. Oh, you sleep at night. I sleep in the day. <gasps> That's amazing. That means we're both awake at all times. <laughs> <laughs> this is a meeting of minds. <laughs> Gruff's gone to bed a long time yeah, ago. They, they, Gruff <laughs> just left them all in space yeah. in the room. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The kids tie themselves out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you make your way back and fall into a pleasant slumber. Um, at least, uh, certainly Rowan and Gruff, you are... Uh-oh. What, what would be... What would, no, what oh, yeah. would be a good dream oh, for yeah. Rowan? Like, what, what would a good dream be for Rowan? It would be Rowan gently floating, because flying's a good sign, mm -hmm. uh, just over some grass and some moss, uh, just over a lake. Just you get like, very strong, like, Studio Ghibli, like you're just yeah. gently floating mm. across that floating. grass. That wind yeah. swept. Taking in the wind and the yeah. sounds and the smells mm. of nature. Nice. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and that's what you dream. Uh, what does a gr good dream look like for Gruff? Oh, it's, um, you know, he's on the sea, you know, the shallows and ice heart. It's just that pre-dawn as the sun's starting to come up. He's got his birds, Serra Nenea, with him, and he's just, you know, just catching that first current, and yeah. he's just seen that first glimmer of, you know, a silverfish. And it's just, yeah, enjoying yeah. the clean air and watching yeah, the sunrise. Yeah, that crisp, clean uh, ice, ice heart air, basically. Mm. Yeah, nothing like it. Uh, amazing. Daisy. Hello. You didn't get a blessing. No, I didn't want one. You don't get a nice dream. Oh, OK. <laughs> cool. Daisy can dream. You've had dreams before. But you also, and it's not happened often, but sometimes when you go to sleep, when you were younger, you used to think they were dreams. And then as you've kind of gotten older and you've gotten to know Nim, you've come to understand that they're not dreams, they're memories. The few times when yours and Nim's kind of essences really merge. Because the dreams are always from Nim's perspective. And with all this talk of planes and battles and everything else, this night is one such night. You are not your, in your body. You are in the, bod the body of a humanoid figure clad in light armor that is a mixture of a pale white leather and a golden crystal-like substance. Different pieces of it, very Horizon Zero Dawn, but a bit, bit more kind of put together, almost a bit Roman legionnaire as well. A skirt rather than like plate trousers, you know, a tunic, a helmet, braces. You carry a bow and you know you have a gladius at your side and you and your squadron of other celestial beings, all with this luminous blue skin, 
glowing eyes, sometimes golden light, sometimes white light, sometimes silver, but all with that same bluey hued, um, sometimes pink, but very rarely uh, figures as you are scouting out a kind of mountainous region. And once this mountain would have been golden and uh, crimson in color with the soft pinks mixed in between it, almost like sunset captured in the earth. And the white clouds would have once filled the peaks, but now these mountains have been covered in a sort of black grime and dark clouds plume from camps that you can see nestled between the mountains where you can hear the raucous din of demons and fiends. You can smell the putrid sulfuric air of their war machines. And Nim and her squadron <coughs> sneak their way all the way into the camp. You pass racks, kind of crudely put together racks made of bone and sinew. And on these racks are hellish firearms, like rifles and muskets and machine guns, but made of like hell metal and hellfire, shaped with their barrels like screaming demon moors. Racks of these weapons ready to be grabbed by the infantry. But Nim, sneaks into this camp, makes her way into the disgusting tents that are made of demonic flesh stretched over bone. And Nim, quite brutally, pulls out that gladius and goes from sleeping demon to sleeping demon and Rick drags the blade across their neck, plunges it into their hearts, and <clears throat> until the moment that her squad is discovered, tries to kill as many of these things as she can until eventually she's caught, a retreat is feigned, and then suddenly you are running back through those mountains, slipping on the grime, that thick sludge-like fog residue, firing bow shots of locks and arrows back into these demonic fiends. Explosions and demonic shells go flying past as you and your squad retreat back to hide, ready to ambush another day. And that is the memory that you have instead of a dream. Yay! Lovely. Hello. You stand out in the street. It is spring, so it's not particularly cold, but it's not warm. Not that it would really bother you. The cold here is nothing compared to the cold of Osseus. But it's just you and Percival on an empty street. You know that these guild members are watching you from the windows, but they certainly probably can't hear you. What do you do? Fila just sits down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Percival, Percival, take a seat, my dear. Have us, have us, take a look. You've been standing all day. Sit <sighs> down. Bless you, bless your bones, I suppose. <sighs> Percival, it's been a weird day. It's been a very weird day. Hmm, <coughs> yes. Just looks at you. I've spoken to people who, who think they've shown me the truth of what lies beyond, and frankly, I think they're liars. <laughs> I think they're liars trying to poison my mind. But, okay, okay, so here's what, here's what I've been told, okay? Not, not if this sounds familiar. I, they showed me a grey land with, a gr with no nothing, grey sand, a lake that doesn't ripple, a, a dark sky, endless, endless undead, gleaming, beautiful undead. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Skeleton does not nod. Good. Does Ophelia have any <coughs> symbols of the Grave Father, like a necklace or a holy symbol or a maharama or...? On her whip, she has a silver plaque with an engraving in Ossian um, that says, um, flesh for the mortal, blood for the eternal in Ossian. Mm. 
just on the, her whip handle. Mm. So it's like a holy thing, isn't yes. it? It like, represents the faith of the Grave Father and everything else. Yes. You know Percival is not... Well, whether or not Ophelia knows this, but, like, Percival doesn't act on its own sort of intelligence. Mm -hmm. It follows orders. It does what you tell it to, and when you don't tell it what to do, it follows the orders it was given a long time ago. It's very rare that Percival does something that you haven't told Percival to do or that would be expected for it to generally do to look after itself. But as you say this, and I'm guessing at this point there's definitely some feelings of uncertainty mm. in Ophelia. Even if she doesn't want it to be there, there is that feeling, right? Percival's little bony hand comes out of his robes and it just touches the plaque on the whip. Tap, tap, tap. And then the hand retreats back in. Yes. My faith is always with me. And I use it to smite the dishonest and bring justice to those that seek to stop me in my quest. I will not be swayed. I admit my judgment has been lax of late and I've been questioning my faith, but who is it for strangers to tell me what I should believe and show me these false images of futures that have not been decided for me? I know my future and I know my place. This is proof enough. Thank you, Percival. You are a wise friend. I'm glad to have your company. She just uh, says nothing, just stares. She just open the bottle and take a sip and just lay on the ground of her back, just looking up at the stars and just... Given the day she's had, would Ophelia fall asleep? Mm. Do you want to make a constitution save yeah. to see if you can physically stay awake Health all night? really low. Yeah. So let's make it a constitution saving throw. I'll say DC, I'll say DC 12, to just kind of keep yourself awake. Eight. Eight. So you try your best to stay awake as much as you can. You know that you've got an important job, you want to look after Percival. But you lie down, and staring up into the night sky of Althea, you can see stars twinkling up ahead, and you feel your eyes close, you force them open. You take some more swigs of wine, but as the alcohol begins to hit your system, there's just... And you can almost hear a voice. Sleep. Sleep. Daughter, sleep. In your eyes. And the voice turns feminine and it almost sounds like the Baroness. Sleep. Child, sleep. And eventually your eyes flutter closed. And you also dream. You stand before a throne so large, like a great monument carved from not stone, but bone. Skulls upon skulls upon skulls. The armrests carved from some giant being or beast long since dead and a figure sits within that throne. Dressed like a warrior king of old, black tattered fabric covered in dust and the wear of ages, bones protruding, legs, feet garbed in anklets and jewelry around the waist, a great belt you see a great form underneath a uh, kind of rotted and faded away great surcoat that once would have been so bright and beautiful but is now dull grey and black with just the faded elements of red and green in colour. Armour, rusted and pitted but still impressive and decorative in its construction and great skeletal hands grip the armrests. And it all culminates in a great skull face upon which rests a great crown, black and twisted iron. And in the eye sockets of the skull blaze two pinpricks of red light. And you have seen this figure all throughout your life displayed 
on altars, on plaques. This is the Grave Father. Child. Child, child. His voice seems to change until it finds one that it likes. Child. I see you. I hear you. You have been shown lie. Oh, my great lord, I knew it. I knew I had. I knew I could trust in my faith and you. You. The figure stands up takes a step and as it does it almost seems to shrink down to your size still tall like seven feet tall flesh seems to come back to the arms creating like this dark skinned but muscular figure but the face stays a skull you see this kind of rippling warrior kind of underneath my child you are chosen and reaches out a hand. I shall show you what is unseen. Ophelia takes it gladly. Takes it, and the scenario around you, this has all been in a black void, just this throne. And then the atmosphere around you changes and shifts to that dusty gray plane that you did see in Blackwing's vision. And it almost races at too fast a speed as if you were running across it at great velocity. And you see the broken cigarettes and you see the crumbling necropolises and the still lakes. But then it's like running as the planet begins to turn and the horizon draws closer. You find yourself in the most beautiful city. Old, cold stone, but it is beautiful in its design and it is filled with undead. But for the first time, you see creatures very much like the Baroness. You see vampiric lords and ladies painting, crafting, dancing, sword fighting. You see spectral wraiths come and go. You see figures wrapped in runic bandages, weaving great spells. Not all is dust. Not for my chosen. It's beautiful. Life is dull. Death eternal these and he gestures to the vampires and the spectres and all these other different undead they have been chosen when i call for them they shall lead to the legion but why waste my time i call them when they are needed I need no tactics. I need no armaments. Time will take from my foes everything. So I allow them their joy, their life, their passion, their ambition, their lust for power. When the time comes, they return to me. Do not be led astray. You do great work, daughter of Ossia. Thank you, my lord, thank you. How can I be of better service to you? Build me a shrine. Bring me new flock. Teach them as you know the truth to be. I will. I will, your lord. Thank you. She's like crying. Thank you. Like takes your hand, like lifts it up like his skeletal hands on like the tears. And then you feel like the fingers begin to like dig into your eyes, drawing blood that mixes with the tears. There 
much better. And pulls away, and that's when you wake. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that is where we're going to end today's episode. I think I want to convert. <laughs> Fuck the scions. <laughs> Trot's like, I don't want any of this. Sadie Skeletor. <laughs> Listen, I know who's playing this character, and I, I know what this player likes, all right? It's like, listen, when you've got somebody who's got a Skeletor shrine, you put a dash of Skeletor in there. Anyway. <laughs> that is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will hopefully have Tommy Wombus back next week, and I think we will be jumping straight back in with you guys finally oh. meeting with Duke Ignarius. It is written. But yes, lots of setup, nice bit of chat, a nice bit of lore. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, that's Hell it for yeah. this week. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you next time for High Rolls of Rose. Bye-bye!